If I don't look like an idiot, I'm keeping it on. Okay. <laughs> I think you look good. Alright. Let me see. Let me see. Like, okay. This is it? Are we live? Yeah, that's it. We're on. We're on. We're alive. Okay. We're, we're alive. Are? Actually? Yeah. That this is a show? This is the show. Oh, hello. <laughs> hey, we started. <laughs> there you go. Uh, um, Javier here has just put on a hat he has found in the room. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, should, should, show, the, show the people what, what it is. They can't see it. It's, it's, a, it's, an, it's an Aperture Science trucker hat. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Fantastic. Found it in this room. Found object. <laughs> cool. Found object. <laughs> Neato Cheeto. <laughs> Great stuff. Manor F1 is building their garage in Melbourne. They, so, so they got their stuff in. They actually got their stuff in. According to Tobias Gruner, though, they are wearing Marusha team kit still. No, this is. What this, does that mean? This is not what from. Mean? This is not from from Toby. Actually, like no? uh, if you go up, this is from F1. Oh, this is from Paddock. Paddock. Well, yeah. he, he's retweeted this. He brought it to our attention. Yeah. Today. <laughs> uh, I guess you obviously didn't know. Manor Mar is. The new Marusha. Okay. They've that changed, sounds like a color. They've changed their name. <laughs> Marusha. <laughs> like it sounds like it sounds like, like a maroon color, yeah. and fuchsia. <laughs> They're uh, like a, some yeah. Russian sports car company that never really did anything. Okay. Well, they're bankrupt now, and yeah. but the, the the team that was racing for them has somehow managed to pull. Their, like we were talking about this a few podcasts ago. Yeah. Uh, about how they were bankrupt and they were most likely not going to make it, and like there were talks about people buying it, but it was all very co like extremely complicated, and 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 people had absolutely. If you had asked even a a, um, a top journalist um, like um, not even not not just Toby uh, but um, uh, what's his name Joe Sayward uh, that he did an AMA just last week on Reddit yeah. and on his AMA somebody asked him if he thought that um, the Manor was gonna make it to Melbourne and he said he he was basically like maybe but I don't think so okay like he's like it's gonna be hard but maybe but I don't think so. Because uh, the, people were saying, but it, even two, three weeks before that, mm -hmm. um, it, w it seemed like an impossible task. Yeah, they, well, they only announced, well, we'll talk about this in a bit, but they only announced their second driver <laughs> today, I guess. Yeah. Well, they've changed their name back to their old original name that they never used, I guess. Manor Marusha? <laughs> Manor, Manor F1. Maybe. No, but they have to keep the Marusha part in it. Right, like because yeah. uh, just so that it's easier for them to start the championship. Because um, if they want to change the name fully to just Manor, they have to get approval from all the teams and call uh, like a, a, an extra meeting or whatever. Yeah. So just to get rid of that complication, boom, Manor Marisha or whatever. Welcome to Flat Out Fever. Uh, 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 uh. Mm -hmm. Episode gunshots and stuff. Ten, I guess. Ten, ten. We're ten. ten. Episode ten number weeks. ten. Look yes. at that. An exciting week. The season is beginning on Friday. Yeah, and and, and Friday, obviously we're Sunday. Well, I mean, it's Sunday is the race, yeah. but Friday is like when the, the practice starts. Is. Okay, yeah. Friday is practice. Saturday, more practice and qualifying race. Okay, cool. And then and it's a quali qualifying, qualifying session. Session. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and and then the race on Sunday, the actual race, the event that people, the most people actually watch <laughs> is the race. I'd say second to the race would be qualifying. Okay. We, because we're consummate F1 fans, obviously. <laughs> obviously. We, we, Especially we, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Typically watch all three. Actually, no, practice is, practice is cool to, to watch sometimes, especially at the beginning of the year. Just to yeah, sort of have it in the background. Start. Yeah, I throw it on when I'm like doing mm. dishes or make dinner or whatever. Uh, Make dinner, <laughs> making dinner, yeah. making making some food, you know, or like you know cleaning or whatever. I just yeah, sure. I, I put it on and like just sometimes every once in a while they'll like they'll say something. Yeah, they'll say something thing. interesting. Okay. Yeah, while while analyzing practice. Before um, we get too deep here. Yes. Before oh, yeah. we do, do some quick shout outs, flat out fever at Gmail. Uh, flat out fever on Twitter, flat out fever on Skype, on Reddit. That baseline again. <coughs> Excuse me. That cough too from the bassist himself. <laughs> yeah, it's listen, fun times. Listen to bamboo.com. Yeah. Listen if to if you like the song, thank yeah. you. The thank Mountains you. EP. Yeah. 
Down, you can download it from there. And now live, flatoutfever.com. Oh, yeah, big announcement. I, we, we have a website. Yeah, well, we, to, we told you guys that there, there were going to be big things coming, big things <laughs> coming during the next few weeks. And that's one. I mean, it's it's not, it's not it's honestly not that big. We we should have had a website a while ago. But no, it's, it's you know, since the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, a little poke, poke at ourselves. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but we got it up. We got it up. Yeah. Uh, and looks good, by the way. Hey, thanks, man. Hey, uh, no we, it was it was a communal effort, <laughs> and no, we, we just did it. <laughs> we got we got the MP3s are there. So MP3 downloads. Yeah. You so don't if, even if have you to go, look at us anymore. No, exactly. Yeah. If, you, if you don't like our ugly faces, you can just listen Ooh. to us. Uh, so yeah, flatoffever.com. It takes you right. To the page where you can either see the video or listen to the podcast itself or um, download it. Or if you have iTunes on your computer, I thought, you can. I thought this was a beer opener for a second. No, no it's, it's, uh, it's a Mach 7. <laughs> Mach 7. <laughs> 7 Blades. <laughs> it's the one that's got the, the roll. Like it's oh, like a ball. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like oh, it sticks I to your face or something. I had to get like a shaver. Sorry to go off topic. Just yeah, a no. second. I uh, had to get like a new shaver, uh, new new razors. Yeah. And I was like, why don't I just buy a new goddamn razor for like $7? I know. Instead of like the $20 it is for like four razors. It's That's how they like, get you, I man. I don't care. Yeah. That's how they I'm get gonna you. just milk that for three months. <laughs> just cuts, cuts all over my face. What's a razor? I have <laughs> clearly. Like, like, I have not. They used to use just one blade. I've been clean shaven and maybe once or twice in the three or four years now. Oh my god, you're crazy. Done with that. My my shaver shaver even got stolen like six months ago from oh. the airport. Of course. I don't even have yeah. a shaver. They anymore. thought it was a dildo. <laughs> TSA yeah. just opens up. It's like, that's a dildo. Was, <laughs> the shortest I can Must go is like a number lot. one in one of those hair cutting oh, things. Yeah. That's all I have. <laughs> it's like <none>. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, what, what were we, what were we, okay. Oh, yeah. Threes. Website. Website. Uh, go, to, go to our website. We got it. Um, um, iTunes link. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you got iTunes on your computer, you can just hit a link. It's at the top, I think, of the website, top right. It says uh, links down below. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Links down below, but if you go on the website, it's a top right, I guess. So imagine you on the website. So yeah. Like, it's up there. <laughs> <laughs> Round five of the RFM contest continues. Yes. Send us send us a picture or a video of you chugging a beer out of track. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Um, but continuing on, I mean, I, we'll, we'll touch on all this on the on the uh, Melbourne coming up, uh, the Australian Grand Prix, and the first race of the year. Very excited about that. Um, we'll talk about that coming up. One we'll more quickly, about, because yeah. of the short time limit, Fantasy F1. You have less than four days to get your picks in for pretty much any fantasy site. They get locked down once Join our league. Oh, oh, can I tell them my name? My name for my... Yeah, of course. Sure. It's uh, Roscoe, uh, the Roscoe Rocket. The Roscoe Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> that's your teammate and team name? Nice. I think it's for... I don't think it's for Badger. I can't... Uh, maybe it's F1 Fantasy. Oh, okay. Or F, uh, Fantasy F1 League or something. So for anyone that wants to compete with us, badgergp.com. All the links are on the website. Go to All the website. All the links are on our website. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. F1.udt.co.za and fantasy dash. F1-league.com. I don't know why all these websites are so long, so many syllables. <laughs> but uh, Flat Out Fever Podcast is our league on all three if you want to compete with us. Yeah. You can join multiple leagues, so whatever. Play with your friends, play with us. Play with whatever. Make some predictions. Play with yourself. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> or just by yourself. It's fine. You have no one to prove. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, make, make like five accounts, just yourself. <laughs> Compete against yourself. If, uh, it's not like playing chess against yourself. I guess so. Must be. Yeah. yeah. It's only a two, who wins. Chess is only for. Oh, two but, men. but there's there's a chance. Uh, you know the element of chance, right? So you can like, I, I guess if. You, oh, you can, I see. Right. Yeah. Because every every race, like the yeah, the. Outcome. I was thinking about chess for some reason. Yeah. Well, whatever. It's it is it is it is, it is, it is. In, in a way in a way. Um. <laughs> before I get into more big things that are coming up. <laughs> um. <laughs> I uh, I want to uh, do, do a shout out at somebody on Twitter. I, I sorry I don't remember right now. I forgot to write this down. But um, on episode eight, a couple podcasts ago, um, I was talking about Flavio Briatore and how he was told to never come back to F one ever again um, <laughs> uh, because of a scandal. Um, and it was basically he told um, Fernando Alonso's teammate to crash, uh, and then because of that he won the race. And I said. 
something like, oh, and everybody knew, so he got kicked out of F1 because of that. Uh, no, it apparently didn't happen exactly that way. It was only until um, somebody else got fired that he, then he spilled the beans. And But either way, before, like by the end of that same season, uh, Flavio Briatore was told not to ever come back to F1. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that's courtesy of, you know, some guy on Twitter. Thanks, guy on Twitter, uh, for correcting us. We are not... We don't claim to be F1 journalists. I, I, do I, I yeah. do. <laughs> I just make up shit. Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. But, but, but you know what I mean? Like with the, the, Ferrari now changed yeah. their color to blue. <laughs> <laughs> I you, heard it. You heard it here I first. Heard it, I heard it here first. <laughs> there was well, actually, isn't there such there, a thing though? Like, it's like, actually, Italian, actually, like Italian, that's a soccer team, right? The soccer. There's well, soccer. yeah. When they, when they play association sports, such as football or soccer yeah um then yeah, they're, i'm such a peason for <laughs> soccer their um their their national color is blue right. but when racing their national color is red this goes oh, back really? to like, oh, like yeah. always yeah yeah, yeah. Way right. i'm calling it they're changing the color of the blue the, and what, <laughs> actually funny enough there was one ferrari i don't remember exactly when but back at back in the day there was one ferrari that was blue and it was it was blue because of the person who drove it. I forgot who it was, uh, but yeah, there, there was there have been there has been one Ferrari oh, that see, has been blue, color blind or something. He couldn't <laughs> he couldn't see the, <laughs> the front of the car. Uh, no, I think I think they just uh, because of he, he preferred blue for some reason. Maybe he was French or something. Mm. The French racing color is blue. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Um, oh, I see. Okay, yeah. British green. <laughs> yeah. Ew. Yeah, it's it's like it's like a, like a, it's like a, a bad doesn't seem like green. a. Fast color, deep forest Seems like green. <laughs> okay, British yeah. racing green. Okay. Yeah. But going back to what I was saying, we don't really. I mean, we don't. We don't go out there and say no. like, "Listen to us, we're very no. serious F one journalists." Yeah. I mean, and if and we if know we do, everything. and if we do, we are clearly like not being serious about that. Totally. Um. So, so, so we, we we are going to make some mistakes here and there. Uh, please correct us. Yeah, send us your comments. Yeah. Uh, Sunday. We did talk to somebody though who was exactly we yeah a real F one journalist who says important things on <laughs> Twitter. Th <laughs> People pay attention to what he says. Yes, he gets paid to make sure they are all correct. Yeah. <laughs> Tobias Gruner that's from his, um, that's his name from yeah, Germany. From Germany, the, Ger the German publication. Uh, I, I know it as AMUS. AMUS uh, Auto Motor und Sport. Uh, <laughs> und Sport. <laughs> yeah, und Sport. Und Sport. <laughs> I didn't even know that. I, I always read it as Auto Motor and Sport. But mm. yes, that yeah, it's, it's 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 a car magazine from Germany. All uh, those English words came from German. Exactly, or something. Um, so yeah, he's he he was he, they didn't he called even us change the spelling from Stuttgart. Ooh. Yeah, he called oh, us all place. the way from Stuttgart um, this Sunday, this past Sunday, right before you know he was just getting ready. He was he just finished packing up. I guess yeah. head to Australia on the A three eighty, Qantas and Emirates. Like, yeah. He and played that down a little bit, but you know, yeah, <laughs> it's not it's, it's not so the, glamorous. It's like the it, it, it's, yeah. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> uh, we are going to uh, play that interview uh, probably now, probably yeah. soon. Or do we want? Uh, sure, sure. Let's yeah. do it. Pretty, yeah, pretty all right. It is, it's a very cool interview. Yeah, here we go. Here he is. There we go. Hey, there hey. we go. <laughs> Guten Abend, Herr Grüner. Guten Abend. You guys seem to increase the volume. You're a little bit loud. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, can we turn? Can you understand me? I can. I can. Yeah, I can, yeah, I can hear you. Can hear you. Okay. Can you? Can and you see us? You're perfect, man. You're in HD. <laughs> okay. Great. <laughs> there we go. Toby. The globe. Good to see you, man. Good to Good see to you see again, you again, man. <laughs> <laughs> the last time we saw each other. I, I, I don't remember most of it, but I remember we had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. But in Montreal, you always have a good time, I think. You know? Yeah, I think yeah. so too, man. I think so too. Yeah. Toby, Especially I... Especially with you. 
<laughs> well, we, uh-huh. we, we will see you there uh, um, this this June. Actually, we're all going. And uh, my, uh, Toby, just so, so you know, uh, here's uh, my friend Mike. Hi. He's our producer. Hi. This is Dan. Nice hey, meet. how are you? Cool. <laughs> and and I'm Javier. And uh, yeah, we're 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 giving it we're giving it a shot here to this to this podcast thing. And uh, let me be the first to say we're not worth it, man. We're not worthy of your presence. <laughs> Come on. Come on, you're making me blush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank, well, thanks for your time. You are, and yeah, and, no and you're, you're very busy. I know we've, I've been bugging you about this uh, for a little while. And yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for, for giving us this spot. You got everything ready for Melbourne tomorrow or what? Uh, yeah, just packed all my bags. You will see them <laughs> there right behind me. And uh, yeah, my, all the documents are on the right, you know, passports, accreditation details, stuff like that, you know, visa, nice. uh, papers, all, all ready. Everything tomorrow is ready for the, the year. Uh, tomorrow is... Uh, the day when the, the flight is going from Frankfurt. Nice, nice. nice. How long a yeah. flight is that? Like 12 hours? Uh, it's, no, from Germany, it's 22 or something. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. wow. there's, a, there, there's a stop in, in Dubai. I'm going with Emirates and then with Qantas. So, oh, and one enough. hour stay, stop over in Dubai and then, yeah. But in total, it's something like 22 hours. That's least, crazy. You're on the good airlines, at least. <laughs> nah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'll comment on that. <laughs> but this is this is the life of of, a, of an F1 journalist, right? You have to spend tons of hours in the plane every year. Yes, nice. that, that's, you think like it's glamorous and cool and stuff like that. And in the beginning, it was, I have to say, but it's not not that good at all, you know. It, 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 in, you're, you're away from home for 150 days a year, you know. Wow. The social life is a little bit um, has a little bit of problems, you know, keeping in touch with your friends and family and stuff like that. I you're it. only only here every second weekend, you know. So it's not not all of it is good, but I but I won't complain definitely. <laughs> no doubt. There's <laughs> lots of time lining up for paperwork and things like that too. Bored. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's, it depends. Some some countries are worse than others. You know, uh-huh. for for Australia, for example, you have to fill out I think five five pages of, uh, of personal details, oh and you have goodness. to pay a fee of one hundred one hundred and forty Australian dollars, which is which is quite yeah. a big sum yeah. actually. It's like a hundred euro, for, right? For, yeah, about 100 euro. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, just for the visa, just the visa fee, you know, that's so it's pretty, pretty. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. Fun. I heard from uh, Joe Sayward. He did a, an AMA on Reddit and he said that uh, getting to Russia last year was a pain in the air. Proverbial yeah. ass. <laughs> you can't swear on, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, we can swear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Russia, Russia is a pretty special case, I have to say. Uh, China is always uh, also a pain in the, you know what, and uh, USA, of course, but as, at least with the USA, you, you have the visa for five years, you know, that okay. you have to do the, oh, wow. the, the, all the stuff and you have to go to uh, to the embassy and there's a little interview, you know, so they they want to have the whole thing and you have to pay, of course, a fee, stuff like that. And But but you at least have, have the visa, you're allowed to go there for five years, but with China, or Russia, or Australia, you have to do it every year. So, yeah, India was also pretty crazy, you know, but that's gone. <laughs> yeah. I'm not so unhappy about that. <laughs> In the end, it was good. It was a good track, though. I guess yeah, so. it was, yeah, it was okay, but yeah, the, rest, yeah. Yeah. the whole atmosphere. Did, did you ever get sick while eating Indian food over there? Uh, no, no, no. I'm, my, my stomach is is pretty tough. <laughs> no problem with that. And I, I actually I like Indian food. Oh yeah, a lot. So love yeah. Indian food. Nice, <laughs> nice. Uh, so yeah, so, let, why don't we talk about F1 for a little bit? <laughs> Just a little bit, though. Yeah, how about yeah. actually no. Before we get that, because I know, I mean, obviously, you you have to like F one to be to be an F one journalist at least a little bit. But yeah, I for, for sure. Yeah. But but I know I remember uh, talking to you last year that you actually are a fan of North American sports as well. Yes, I'm, com- I'm completely uh, I'm completely fan of, of, of all of it. But basketball, hockey, of course, NFL, That's crazy. football, all, yeah. all, the, all the stuff. <laughs> Even baseball, baseball games I watch. At least the playoffs, you know. But wow. it's it's, it's wow. hard to stay in touch, you know, when you when you're always on on uh, on the move. Yeah. For example, that just today I um, I've got the the the, um, the NBA. Um, Gamecast or what it's what it's what it's called. Yeah, and, oh, and right, right. We have, have been watching. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a big Dallas Mavericks fan, of course, with with Dirk Nowitzki, and and was just watching a game which was actually ten days ago. You know, so it's oh, you have after to every care. after every trip. You know, you have to, to do a little bit of catching up <laughs> yeah. and, and watching all the games. And you have to be careful not to get the the results. You know, uh, so, so to keep it's, it a little bit more exciting. It's hard, this, man. 
This is what we're always talking about, that yeah. there's no service that exists like that for Formula One. Yes, that's yeah. a problem, man. Yeah. That's a big it's problem for no, me. Big problem. But even, even more, One of the biggest. Even more than that, like Google should have a no, a no spoilers mode where if you're looking for yeah. news about a sport. Yeah, we were talking about can, this a week can, or two you can ago. Set it, like if, if you could say, okay, I haven't seen this game and that game. Show me everything else. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? The big problem was uh, was during the, the, the Harris test, you know, the, the first oh, test. Right, game. yeah. There yeah. was the, the, the Super Bowl, the NFL <laughs> Super Bowl was oh, right, on, right. on the first testing day. Yeah. And I'm a big Patriots fan, I have to say. <laughs> and, you know, I... I I tried. I, I really tried hard not 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 to get the result of the game, but oh, it was was quite impossible. And with all, because I have to keep in keep in touch with the Twitter Twitter oh, community yeah, so and stuff like that. And everybody was tweeting it's about the game. And you're like, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. Yeah. <laughs> spoiler, spoiler alert, spoiler yeah. alert. <laughs> not easy. No, I I bet. I mean, it's uh, and it's. Uh, I mean, Germany probably doesn't have like. Do do you get games there live in in Germany? Like yeah, the, the the NFL. Yeah, you have to on on pay TV there. They're quite okay. quite, a, quite a lot of games. It's, um, and the, the NFL games are, are regularly um, um, shown on on TV, German TV on pay TV at least. But with hockey or, or NBA, you have you have to go on the internet and and, mm. and get yeah. those um, paid yeah. subscriptions. Yeah. So you're not only a fan, you're a committed fan of, of some North American sports. That's good yes. to see. I, I, I really am. You know. <laughs> and I'd, I'd rather have done it uh, instead of Formula One, you know. Oh, really? Oh. Sports, yeah, but uh, you can't make money of it in Germany. The, the fan base is just not big enough. But, but sure. Formula, one, Formula One is uh, number two, right, right behind that. <laughs> really? Because I, 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 I heard that Germans are, have, are struggling to go to Formula One, though, to go to the events. Yeah, yeah let's talk yeah. about your home race. Yeah, that's what, a, oh, that's a big problem. Um, what's big the problem. latest rumors on the fate of this year's Grand Prix? It's gonna happen. Uh, it's gonna happen. Or? Yeah, I don't. I, to be honest, I don't know. The last thing I, I heard was that Bernie is still trying to to get to get it to get it working. But um, yeah, it's look it's looking bad. I heard what? that Mercedes is, is is pushing a bit, you know. But yeah, I'm sure they want it. What say, what can they I do? Can't right? Say too much about yeah. That's the, the problem is is always with with uh, companies pushing. Uh, Event like that, you know, you, you can't overdo it. You know, you can't put, just give give them money for free. You know, you have to do some kind of promotion. You have to, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't know how to say it. You have to. <laughs> There's rumors uh, this morning now about the money for you get something in return. You just can 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 give them the money for free. You know, just for the sake of it. Yeah. Oh, there was a little bit of a lag there. Hello? Yeah, we just lost you for a second. Can you see, still see me? <laughs> yeah, I can see you. Though. You're, You're back. back. You're back. <laughs> yeah, there was uh, rumors this morning about um, Hamilton's contract with Mercedes that uh, he might potentially be signing for the rest of his career. Do you, do you think that has anything to do with the attendance at the German Grand Prix? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> the problem is, you know, with the Hamilton contract, I think that it will sign. It will be signed in the next few few weeks. Or more. It will be definitely signed. That there's no problem with yeah, it. Just negotiating negotiating the money. It's it's going through. Um, yeah, but with the German audience, it's it, it has a lot of reasons. You know, beginning with Michael Schumacher, the the big yeah. years they are yeah. gone, and and all the other problems Formula One has. You know, with the with the rules and the, and the, and the cars, the noise, all the stuff. There, there there's a lot of uh, bad publicity for Formula One in the last last uh, yeah years. I have to say. Yeah. So um, specifically the, in Germany. The, 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 yeah, specific, specifically in Germany. Yeah. Oh, German, okay. German fans are. Um, yeah, they're criticizing a lot. I have to say, <laughs> the whole the whole Formula One, um, they're criticizing the, the action that the cars are not overtaking each other, which is not yeah. true actually. Yeah, that's, that's true. Not true yeah. at all. If, if you, um, especially in the last years, there was, was yeah. a lot of lot of action beginning with the Pirelli tire problems. But that, at least yeah. something was go, was going on in the races. You know, it, it was not boring. No, that's they true. They always claim that. They always say, oh, I remember the. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Toby, you are not... Schumacher was winning all the, all the races, or Ferrari was winning all the races with a half a minute uh, uh, advance in, in, uh, gap in, 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 uh, in the finish. So, uh, and it was, that was really a boring time, but, but they uh, seem to, seemed to think of it a little bit different, yeah. Because Schumacher was winning. That was all that counted. So it was exciting. Can you see us? Hello? Yes. No. I can oh, okay. Hear Sorry you. about that. I can I, I can hear you again. Okay. Good. I, see, uh, I, I see I see you all the time, but I, I sometimes <laughs> the sound is like. Yeah. No, for sure. No, and and what you're saying, uh, it's it's definitely true. I mean, 
when I uh, like when I started watching F1, that was actually when uh, Montoya joined. Remember Juan Pablo Montoya? Because he's mm-hmm. Colombian, I'm Colombian. No. Yeah, yeah. But um, yes. ah, okay. But after like when yeah when Schumacher started winning by a lot, I sort of stopped watching Formula One, and then it's it, yeah. like I started watching recently uh, over the past few years because it, it it is genuinely more interesting now for sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, but a German audience seems somehow seems not to not to understand that <laughs> that your podcast, your YouTube podcast, is not. Uh, and not not being able to show in in, in, uh, in Germany, you know, not to because there are some some YouTube videos are blocked for some for some reasons. And really? When I'm now crit- criticizing the German fans? Oh, oh yeah. For the, for the lack <laughs> of the <support, so laughs> If you know, you're German, me. just ignore what just happened. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's, I don't know. For for some reasons, there are there are still some hardcore, uh, a lot of hardcore fans, you know, but it's 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 uh, definitely not in, not enough to fill fill whole uh, whole tracks and. and and give them enough money, enough money to to bring back a race. You know, well, Mike and I here both have German blood. <laughs> so I don't know. Hopefully, we're hoping for a turnaround there. Yeah, yeah. Hope, hopefully, <laughs> I don't, don't, come, I don't understand it. You should come to Germany then and, and buy a few tickets, maybe. Then let with. Oh, <laughs> well, we'll, yeah. There right, we well, go. Interesting. There we go. To. <laughs> we have to. We have to make it a one one point. One, we one will. Point. We will make one it to Germany because yeah. and I yeah. and ho- hopefully during uh, during a race that happens at the Nurburgring. But is that even feasible? Because I know that they're saying Nurburgring is too expensive. Nobody wants it. No, Nurburgring is that, that's a different problem. You know, Nurburgring they just um, they had just have to sell the the, the, the track to because um, it was in public. Oh. It was owned by the public and, support, and uh, other investors, and they uh, yeah, they got bank, bankrupt and they have had to sell to sell the track, and then now they they are new owners. And yeah, they have no money. <laughs> they, they, they can't they can't just pay Ecclestone the fee that he likes. So. Um, I heard that they, they. I heard they. They would have given him the track for free, you know, and give him all the um, the income they generate with tickets and, and stuff like that. But that, that wasn't enough. Not for enough Bernie, for him. So I think with uh, with the Nurburgring, the the it's it's over for at, at least for for the next couple of years, you know. So Hockenheim is the only only hope we you know, hope there's left. So, but yeah, I I, I would say it's only 50-50 chance that it's that it's going to happen. But we uh, will find out soon. We, you know? Yeah, we will we will find out soon. Yeah, fingers uh, crossed. Yeah. Um, uh, you had a question that you wanted to ask uh, uh, Toby. About what? <laughs> you have well, that, that was that was basically it about uh, the, just about Hamilton and the German Grand Prix. Yeah, I, 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 I had a question. I had a question. Yeah. A question. Uh, what, what made you get into uh, journalism to begin with? I mean, obviously, you have to have a passion for it. Yeah, journalism was it was always a passion for me. You know, it, it was I studied in information. Science. I think in, 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 in the US, information. Yeah, it's called information science. It, it's it's just um, the journalism is just a part of it. You know, information oh, okay. science is also comp- uh, uh, you can also go into computer science then and, and program uh. stuff or do web, web design stuff like that. And journalism is just one part of it. Okay. But it, it was the the only thing you can study at our university where I lived before. So um, oh, okay, I, cool. I always wanted to go into journalism. Um, yeah. I did work for newspapers before and and, and other stuff. Was, and was so, was sport uh, always like a major yes. major part of that? Yeah, I, I always wanted to go into sport, but you know, during uh, when I when I studied it and when mm-hmm. I started working, I had to cover everything. You know, from doing um, movie reviews, poli- poli- political uh, political stuff, and, yeah, and local pol- uh, policy, and and I don't know what everything was, was on the <laughs> before. But then when I when I finished. Uh, uh, Studying, finished university. I, I really tried to go into uh, uh, sports journalism, and yeah, that, that it worked. Out, it had worked out with the Formula One was just was just luck. I had to, have to say. Oh, that's and, and that's great though. Everything worked out fine. Seems yeah, like yeah, you made out a great career out of it. To follow follow Formula One around the globe, you know, when I when I when I started studying, and that was definitely not what I what like, I had expected. <laughs> that's exciting for, for, for the rest of my life. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm glad it worked out that way. That's yeah, yeah we we that's too, man. Good. Honestly, yeah. like you, um, I you must be giving. Uh, AMUS like half its international traffic. I guarantee you, because yeah. <laughs> I, I I know that your tweets get posted on sites like Reddit and forums all the time. Yeah, and, quite a bit. Yeah, 
Yeah, that, that's good because um, it's it's um, mostly my my colleague Michael Schmidt. He's he's there for ages, you know, in, in Formula One. But he's a bit old school, you know. Yeah. He's uh, he's not on Twitter or Facebook. All that all that electronic stuff. That <laughs> just uh, uh, witch witchcraft for him, you know. He doesn't, <laughs> doesn't like it at all. He doesn't even have a mobile phone, you know. It's, Typical it's, old it's, person. Uh, yeah. It's like Bernie. No, he's not. He's not at all. You know? <laughs> but he's um, that kind of stuff. He's not interested in. Okay. He doesn't want to know about that, you know. So he he he, he always tells me and and he. Because he, he has connections you can't imagine, you know, he, has, For he, sure. he knows everybody and everybody knows him. Really, really crazy. You, you really can't imagine like a person like him, a Formula One journalist like him. I, I can't, I can't praise him enough. And and he's really getting all the all the uh, the spicy information, you know, that I'm that I'm tweeting. So um, he's, he's he's the face of our website. I'm just the the younger face, you know, that that, 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 that gets gets all, all his stories, all stories out out there. I'm mostly doing the the pictures, the technical stuff, and and and, and stuff like that. And oh man, you he's, he's there for the exclusive information. You're doing a great job, man. And I'm sure yeah. I'm sure most people will be happy to know that you are not a green penguin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, finally seeing your face. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I started with that little that little icon. You know, I, I have it. I have, you, you might. I, I don't know if you can see it here in Skype. I use it everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. Is it the it, Linux just, penguin? I know it. it yeah, it's it's a Linux penguin with a little. Um, oh, nice! Great, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. I, I think it's recogniz recognizable. So I, oh, it's a brand on of its own. <laughs> so maybe we could finish with uh, one more F one question. Yeah, go ahead. So I want to talk this week about um, like there's actually quite. I was looking at the F one website. Quite a few rule changes that are coming in this year. A lot of a lot to do with um, safety and penalties but uh, i want to ask you specifically about the virtual safety car system because i know like, at the end of the year they made a big deal last year about testing it and i wonder if that is uh specifically to do with this bianchi thing i know the last thing you tweeted here was uh mercedes making a big deal about their new safety car and uh medical car so yeah. do you think this vsc system is going to be used during the year, or is it more for yeah, just, yeah. just for the image of publicity? Tower. Well, they're, they're actually uh, no, going to be no, using no. it. It will definitely work, but it's uh, you know it's it's, um, it's there are different scenarios when one thing um, um, will activate it and the other and or the safety car came out when when the virtual, virtual safety car will be will be yeah released. <laughs> I don't know how, how to say it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's exactly. mostly when 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 uh, a recovery truck is in in, in in the gravel trap, something like that, you know, when when the, the danger is not, not imminent, you know, but when the when the road is blocked or, or there's a there's a, some other kind of, of danger right right on the on the track, oh, okay. um, then the, like always the, the, the regular safety car will come out. I think the the virtual safety car is just uh, for it, when in former times there were uh, double double yellow flag Double. waved, you know, when there's oh, okay. a specific danger zone outside the track. So to make clear, cars have to have to stick to a certain uh, um, um, speed limit, M minimum time, not go over it, minimum time, you know, to 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 control to control that a little bit better with a with a with a time delta or the time uh, the, the speed on 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 the steering wheel. Um, yeah, in, in 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 situations like that, but I don't think we will we will see less less safety cars this year. Oh so no, that so. Will, that will, and they would they will still will be so, um, plenty of plenty of safety car situations. The virtual car is supposed to be used along with the real safety car or uh, in place no. of no in, in place of the double yellows. In place of double yeah, yellows. Yeah, more in place of that that's how Okay. I understand that. Uh, let, let, we will have to see how, how the how race control will, will handle it. Oh I'm, I'm sure I, I'm sure they'll I find a way to another... screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like you're yeah. saying though, it's, it, it's race hard control, to race control is a pretty, pretty, pretty tough job. I bet. Yeah, and, and we have to uh, give Charlie Whiting a little bit of credit. He's just doing, oh, no, he, he's he, doing a, a good job. He, he always has yeah, been. Always has doing a, I just, I just it's, can't it's imagine. A a, job you can have yeah, I just can't imagine one situation. One like if if Charlie Whiting gets sick one weekend, what do they do? <laughs> like, do they <laughs> I have no, way. I have no idea. And that's, his, <laughs> there's uh, his deputy is uh, uh, Herbie Blash. I don't know if you know him. He's he's also also there oh, yeah. for ages, and and he's knowing all the all the procedures. So I think they will they will they would find one another one. Nice. Who, 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 who could overtake? Uh, 
take over the job. Hey, I, I, I put an alarm to, to go at the 15 minute mark. We've passed that no already. <laughs> you're yeah, no you're, you're cool. <laughs> I want to yeah, ask you, go, going. Be, because I know that it's it's common among F1 fans, wherever you go, if, if, if they're American F1 fans or Germans or something, there there is a one point that if you start talking to them, the conversation turns into what is wrong with F1? <laughs> and, and, and and how there's there's so many things that is, that is rough. And it's, it's kind of a thing that F1 fans sort of love talking about. You know, what, what would I do if I, if, if I was giving the, the, you know, if I was Bernie, what would the I do keys, better? Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but one thing that I, that I have seen and, and that, 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 that recently, like so somebody that caught my attention was Maurizio Arriva Bene. And I've been making a fuzz about him in the, in this show for the last like three or four podcasts. Cause I think that he's, he's got his mind in the right place. Like what have you have you gotten a chance to talk to him to or hear him out like no, yeah not not personally because I was always doing the live coverage thing on uh, during the testing days right. so I, w I haven't been to his press conferences and uh, at oh. least, but I, I, no. I certainly know what what kind of guy guy he is and and what he's talking about he's he's right something has to has to change Formula One has to be more open um, open minded to doing stuff differently you know they're they're a little bit stuck in the in the old th way of thinking you know and and um, especially with interaction with fans for, for example or, or yeah. getting getting access to, to information that you haven't gotten before I think Formula One has to open up a little bit you could see it with the, with the Alonso case you know it was pretty hard to get first any information at all you know and on that Sunday in, uh, in, in Barcelona when, when he crashed for, for four or five hours McLaren wasn't saying anything that's know? true and, and, and <laughs> they're still not really <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah, they're, yeah they're, they're still still, still uh, a bit, bit quiet but that something like that just just can't can't be happening, you know. Right. There, there, there were hundreds of journalists, and and then there's radio radio silence from the team. So I think Maurizio Arrivabene is he's, he has the right right set of minds. Now we have to see if he how he acts, if, if he if he's doing it, doing acting the way uh, he talks, you know. But he, he's been around for a while. I remember because we we watched the Senna documentary again. Like with, I was just at, at Dan's house and we watched the Senna documentary. And I saw there he was there from back in the yeah. Senna days. But I guess uh, working for uh, Marlboro. Marlboro, yeah. Yes, correct. Philip Morris. He was he was <laughs> the PR PR head of PR stuff, uh, something like that. He was there in the uh, in in that function. He was there in the in the garage also. But you know. Um, we will see if he's if he's a, a good team principal. You know, he got he is not he, if he's just a PR guy. You know, that oh, yeah. he, shows, he showed that already that he, he he can do that. You know, he's yeah. he certainly is more how, how do you say that flamboyant? I don't yeah. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he is more more outspoken like, like For sure. uh, his his predecessor. But um, let's see if he can keep all the engineers, uh, the drivers happy. You know, if he can make the right decisions in, in, in uh, technical questions, stuff like this. Stuff like that. He has, he has to prove that he that he has the, all all what it what it takes to be a good team principal, you know. But but it, it, it mustn't be a bad thing, you know. Coming from a PR job, you, you uh, just remember Flavio Briatore. He, he no, also had no 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 idea, no uh, no knowledge about about technical stuff. But he but he still was was a good uh, team principal. For yep. Yeah, but he's he's not he's not, he's not allowed in F one anymore though. No. <laughs> <laughs> also, he also made some some bad decisions. <laughs> But, but he, he, they won titles with him, so um, maybe I can't only talk bad about him. F no, for sure, for sure. I don't know. I, I think he, he was probably a funny guy, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was entertaining, and that's, that I, I, at least I hope uh, Arriba Benes also. So to get a little bit more attention. No, for sure. Right. That's, that's all that counts. <laughs> I've been entertained so far, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Toby, what, what do you think about uh, the, this, like the, the the new Honda engine? You've been there, you've seen it around. Is it any good? Like, have we not seen the full potential of it? Or uh, I, I, it, it hasn't proven yet that it, that it has what it takes. You know, the problem is um, Eric Bullier said every time they they push the push the car really hard and and the engine pretty hard, they they uh, right. discovered another problem. You know that okay. was, and and I don't know if they can. Um, they they find everything they, um, they, every every problem every everything that can go wrong. It's got to be in a shipping and, container right now. Yeah, but <laughs> I don't know if they if they if they got everything um, uh, ready um, for for the homologation and and now the the, the engine is bulletproof. I I doubt it to be honest. Can you predict? Are they going to finish on Sunday? 
Mm, I wouldn't bet. I'd bet on it. <laughs> both, <laughs> both cars? I wouldn't put my money on it. It's, oh, uh, wow. <laughs> really? Eh? <laughs> no, uh, I don't think too many people least, would put their at, money at on it. At least, you know, they have to, they, they ran quite good when they when they turned the engine a bit down, you know, the, especially the, the, the energy recovery system when they um, de decrease the power a bit. But then, you know, the, the car is not, um, not good enough, you know. Yeah. But I heard when everything is working, I heard the, the, the horsepower, the, the, the performance uh, is there. Um, the, the Honda guys, they are quite quite confident. Where if, if they can get the engine reliable, it will be definitely be good enough to compete with the others. But you know, the, the problem is when, when will, the, when will be the moment when they, when they can get the, the, the engine bulletproof? You know? you know, In, I, how, how long will it take? You know? I heard a funny thing. Uh, um, actually, one uh, one of the listeners to the show he emailed us um, something that a Bulgarian reporter said. Anything, but apparently, it's it's really funny to see how the British guys are getting along with the Honda Japanese engineers, and that sometimes there's like a culture barrier in between and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That's always a, a problem with with the Japanese guys. You know, they have their own mind, and and <laughs> British guys are also not not easy to work with uh, <laughs> from time to time. But it's it's a big cultural difference there uh, for sure. I, I don't know because McLaren and Honda they have worked before together yeah. in in some areas. Now they have um, they have different uh, areas because uh, Honda is not uh, the McLaren is doing uh, most of the the. Um, The, the, the hybrid stuff, you know, uh, software and, and electronics, um, um, and, and they have to put it together in, in one in one in one engine, one power unit, you know. And yeah. former times, Honda just brought their engine, you know. The, Here it is, the, race with it, yeah. Yeah. it in and go. Race with it, put <laughs> yeah. it in the car and race with it. It's a little bit more complicated now than in former years. Yeah, But yeah. They, it, I think they will they will definitely struggle this this year, but they. For maybe for next next season, then they they it's it's a learning year for sure. I I don't think they will will come they will challenge for uh, for wins or probably not not even podiums this year. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. so All right. Let's uh, wait. Yeah, for sure. Hey, man, uh, I'm sure you got tons of stuff to do and you still have to keep packing and get, get to bed before tomorrow. So we won't yeah. keep you uh, much longer. Just uh, before, I guess, uh, again, th uh, thanks for coming. We'll uh, okay. we'll see each other in Montreal, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah we, we can do it. We can, we can do a little call-in again after, I don't know, after Bahrain or some, something like that, uh, before the European season, if you like. Perfect. That'd be great. No, yeah. Oh, one, one more. I can, I can put in every time. Nice, nice. W one more thing, uh, just because I, I know that the Reddit guys will love this. Would you ever consider doing a Reddit AMA? Uh, yeah, why not? For sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not. A re I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm reading Reddit from uh, from time to time. I'm not I'm not there always. I'm, I know what a Reddit AMA is, but I, I'm not even. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not. I have not signed in. You know, I don't okay. have a Reddit account. So we'll, we'll, I'm, we'll, I'm we'll not, talk I'm about. I'm not it. sure how that works, but uh, <laughs> I'm definitely open to answer all the questions if if there are. Yeah. We'll we'll talk and I'll guide you through this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're a guy with access. I'm sure a lot of people would have a lot of questions for you. Yeah, but I'm, guys, I'm not. I'm not that interesting. I, I, I'm <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> sure, sure. It's yes, not, it's 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 a different a different job than than staying uh, in an office uh, 24/7. But it's not it's not that glamorous and, and cool. <laughs> it's a uh, job at the end of the day, eh? Yeah, it's a job. You earn your money. But it's, uh, it's, it's one of the better jobs. I, 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 <laughs> it's it's yeah. not what, what you guys may think, you know, <laughs> that I'm always on uh, attending parties and, and getting sure. free shots and, <laughs> and luxurious hotels. and Not always, but sometimes. Or stuff like that. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. Tomorrow I'm sitting for 22 hours in economy class. <laughs> try to get my, my knees uh, in, in shape, you know, stuff like that. So it's, <laughs> Uh, it's not 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 that that not not all not all of it. Please. Not all glamorous. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, not, man. Not, not complaining here. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Have a good one, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll 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 keep talking. And thank yeah. you so much. And yeah, thank thanks again. Thank nice you. to finally <laughs> no see you. If, you. if you got a question that that, that bothers you, bugs you, uh, just write me an email or, or send me <laughs> a, a, on Twitter. All the, all the fans, they can all try to get in in in, in contact with me on on Twitter. Uh, send me a tweet. Um, oh. Um, and I try to answer all, but um, sometimes you know, I, I got a lot of them. But yeah, you got a lot of followers here. So you, you won't get 1,400. 14,000. Oh, 14,000. <laughs> Did you know that you have 14,000 followers on YouTube, on, uh, on uh, Twitter. Twitter? Yeah, ju just look at my, my colleagues there. There are a lot of them. They have uh, 
much more than. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To go. All right, man. Uh, yeah. Have a good one. Thanks so much. Yeah. And uh, we, so we'll talk. Yes. Yeah, have fun Perfect. flying. Good luck Bye-bye. with your flights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thanks. See you. See you. Bye. That was that was pretty awesome. That was cool. Yeah. Thank you, Toby. Yeah. Thank you. Thank danke. So viele, vielen Danke. <laughs> danke schön. Yeah. He's a good guy, the, 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 the Toby, and he's uh, he's gonna be coming back. Uh, we're gonna make this a sort of regular feature every few races. Yeah, probably, uh, after Bahrain, probably. Yeah. Whenever he whenever he can squeeze us in. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, Getting dirty. Um, <laughs> and I'm gonna talk to him about um, maybe maybe arranging a, um, a ride at AMA uh, later on. He said he oh, was interesting. Yeah, just for like you know, because cl- clearly we didn't really ask him much about about F1. Really, mm. <laughs> yeah. he did indicate to us afterwards that he would like to talk. Well, we, we assume not because that's his job. Yeah, I don't want to talk about wires or whatever, but uh, that he would like to talk about F1 more in depth next time. <laughs> We well, we'll, we'll ask yeah. him some actual questions about F1 next time. <laughs> I feel like there was a few. Like, there, was a one there were a couple. There were a couple. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have a better feel of this, how the season's feeling. Totally. Yeah. Something I would have liked to get deeper in with him, though, is about this VSC system. I'm not, I'm not convinced. He, he says he thinks they're going to be using it. They uh, tested it a lot at the end of the season last year, but I don't think so. Especially, uh, go back to, uh, open up the browser there. Go, go to his... His tweets there, not not yeah. The, this one, mm-hmm. so this is the uh, new safety car from Mercedes for F1. The goodbye to the Gull Wings, Gull Wing dollars. The AMG GTS, some V6 by turbo engine or whatever. I guess it's a little closer to F1. And uh, the one after it, the new uh, medical car. It's called the uh, C C35 Estate. Or something like that but these new safety and medical cars is the main reason why i don't believe that the virtual safety car system will be used as much as told what, what, what's will. a virtual safety so I gotta explain yeah i, I need, the, I need the, to the, what happened this. in um in japan last year was jules bianchi the, the guy who's still in a coma now mm-hmm. during a double yellow which means Double caution. That means that there's more than f- one caution. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it means there's officials, there's equipment. I see. In a okay. dangerous area, there's uh, stewards or whoever. There's people on the track where it could be dangerous, and you're sp- you're supposed to slow right down. And uh, I-, I guess that Bianchi was going too fast. But and it was also like heavy rain out, like heavy rain. Uh-oh. They were in the middle yeah. of a, a typhoon, you <laughs> Yeah, it was a, a giant storm. It was like really, really heavy rain, and uh, the race should have been started early. They didn't want to do it because for commercial of reasons. Commercial reasons. Right. So this virtual safety car system is meant to be, be somewhere between a yellow flag and a full-on safety car. A safety car would be pulled out, which is a double double yellows. Yeah, right. which is. Which is a double yellow, right? But I still don't believe that they'll be using it as much mm. as no, Danny. Be, maybe, think so. be, simple as this, man. Simple double yellow this. doesn't happen that often. Right? Correct. So now it's, instead of having a double yellow, they're just gonna switch a button and it's gonna be a virtual safety car. What is there to understand, man? Yeah. There's, <laughs> so what part of it is virtual? Okay. So in in oh, each sorry. each of the Do I need three, a VR helmet now. No. Well, Google they, Glass. They have this uh, LCD screen in front of them. Okay, yeah. more or less like that. And for each sector, there is a minimum time that they have to pass it. So they're so, not they're not telling them, uh, what you know, speed? yeah, take, oh, take speed, but okay. at I least see. like yeah, take, hey, you take at least this, yeah, at least this many seconds per sector. So you should be an average below a certain speed, but at the same time they have to give acceleration to keep the tires and brakes and engine right. at proper right. temperatures. But oh, these shit. two new cars here are part of the reason why I don't believe they'll use that yellow car system as much as Toby maybe thinks they will because these cars are worth a lot of money and they want to sell a lot of them. Yeah. And a virtual safety car 
is very boring on television. Oh, yeah, it, would it sounded be. like Jarvis from Iron Man. <laughs> That'd be sick, right? <laughs> Basically, you're going it's too just, fast. Just <laughs> you're going too fast. <laughs> it's pretty much like that. Yellow lights flash on your steering wheel, and you have minimum times per sector. Yeah, but, but I guess this looks cooler when it. Yeah, yeah, right. That yeah. makes sense. No, the, the, the this virtual it, safety car doesn't look like anything. It, right, right. No, no. Yeah, I get it. That. Just, it's just like a uh, light flashing telling them, you know, slow down, slow down. Um, whereas, like, if they had the proper safety car, which is the other car, the more badass looking one. Uh, yeah, this yeah, is the medical car. Yeah. The yeah. medical car there they would use to like lift the dr- almost like an ambulance, basically. Yeah. On a stretcher, lift the driver back to the pits. This is the so safety car. So if, if 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 things got really bad out of control, then in the middle of a race situation, this like when like as they're racing, like they they tell them all to slow right down, mm-hmm. and then at one point they release this car, and no car can overtake him. So uh, no, unless you've been lapped, unless, unless you've been lapped, no, not but anymore, right? No, nope, that's oh right, 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 right. Unless, but uh, while the sa- while the safety car period is out, mm-hmm. they have to slow right down and follow this car, and no, and and uh, after a certain point, nobody's allowed to overtake each other. So basically, it, it locks the positions and it just goes slower not not really i'm not gonna say slow because it's not slow it's mm-hmm. like it's still going over 100 kilometers an hour sometimes but yeah i think slower like, than the cars normally would be right. closer to 200 yeah. yeah does that mean everyone starts to catch up yeah, yeah exactly yeah so uh, in the middle yeah so, so let, let, let's that's say so squirrely exactly so in, in the middle of a race let's say somebody is like way 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 back like and somebody's advantage is like all like you know like somebody somebody has a huge advantage and somebody else crashes it in a way that they have to pull this out, mm-hmm. then yeah, that will like bring everybody back up. Everybody. And then, and then like, yes. as soon as, and then they call this thing back in mm-hmm. and in that same lap after a certain marker, they can sort of begin to race full speed again. But at that point, if somebody like, if, if somebody was, was counting on that gap yeah. that they had built, it's gone. Uh, it changes yeah, everything. That's crazy. Right. Yeah. This is what we're going to get into quickly. Right? Well, not quickly. We're going to go through this right now. This is the, 2015 FIA Formula One technical <laughs> and sporting regulations, most of it. But we're not going to go too deep. We're going to look at the changes for this year. But one of the big changes for this year is standing restarts. So if there's any sort of a reason that the race has to be restarted, yeah, it will not be what they did, what they would do last year, or after a temporary suspension, things like that. Is they line up on the grid again, run the lights, and they start from a stop again. But Sometimes, sometimes, very but rarely. It's, it's very rare. rarely. But all the rules that allowed that have been rescinded on the recommendation of the majority of the teams. So I guess the, all the teams. So there no, will but not nobody be- really likes that, and it's but it, it is kind of awkward to see like the cars like then lining up like after. You know, after the a few races. Yeah. And, stuff. and again, yeah. after a few laps, like they don't all of a sudden have to start again. Mercedes kicked everybody's ass this year, came back with new safety cars that have engines very similar to the Formula One engines, and probably lobbied very hard for no standing restarts to get to the keep safety car out on track. Yeah. Because now they'll be doing uh, running restarts where, like Jed just said, at a certain point in time when the race steward or the, the race director says so, Safety car comes back in and the race restarts. Ah, oh, okay. But one of the big changes from last year is that any cars that had been lapped, right. so if you were driving a Caterham, Marussia, one of those back guys, yeah. and the front guys came all the way around and lapped you. During the race. During the race. Is that common? Oh, yeah. Oh, shh. It was. It, it probably will be less common this year. Maybe. Maybe, except for maybe. Because Marussia. of the sparks? Because <laughs> of the spikes. Because <laughs> of the spikes. <laughs> <laughs> what would happen is any cars that were lapped, at the time the safety car came out, would be given the time to pass the entire grid. Go back around. And, and go all, the safety car would be out until, like he says, all the way around the track and catch up to the back. Oh, shit. Catch up to the back of the grid again. Whereas this year, if you've been lapped twice, I believe you're still going all the way around. You're un- unlapping your Once. multiple laps. Yeah. Once you're down to one lap, soon as your car is past the front runner... Yeah. As soon as you're ahead of first place, then the safety car will go in and race action will restart. You'll get relapped. That is, that's a pretty big 
Pretty big rule change. Let's call let's call it the Martin Brundle rule. <laughs> hey, he likes to call it the Brundle rule. <laughs> you made a big deal about this yeah. on uh, Sky. For years, actually, he's yeah, been all the time. like every time that that that, yeah, that a TV safety stuff. car got got out, he always complained. This is one of the commentators that like he's he's a, the main commentator for the main British uh, uh, channel, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, broadcast and. He, he, I guess he from that he's got a lot of weight. I've seen that some things that he complains about, then all of a sudden, like they get they get addressed later on. And like, this is what this is just one of them. Mm. Hey, he's one of the greats, the greatest yeah. commentator for sure. And uh, for race suspensions, which are also very rare, which there really should have been one in uh Japan, a similar situation happened again, I'm sure it would happen instead of lining up in the grid like they normally would before and having a standing restart. Every car will pull back into the pits. The end of the pits will be closed. And they'll line up in there until the suspension's over, until the race is declared as canceled. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, yeah. If, if there's going to be a restart, they'll all go back on track behind the safety car and uh, do a, a running restart. Which is, it's it's at least, you know what, and, and this benefits the people on the stands and on TV that, that mm -hmm. are watching the race as well, because yeah. at least there will be something to look at. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because at one point in, uh, so Canada 2012, 2011, no, 2012, um, there was a, a two-hour break in between oh, where okay. nothing happened in the race. Yeah. Oh. Like, you were just like, people, like the, the, and you could, it was kind of awkward because the cameramen were like, had nothing to focus on, so, so they yeah. started focusing on like birds, oh, or no. like, <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And they talked to uh, who directed Star Wars there, George Lucas. Yeah, he happened to be on the grid. They talked to him for a while. Of course, yeah. Man, Jesus. Well, he's yeah. actually a big racing fan. Is he really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not surprised with pod racing yeah. and X wings but and shit. That race was the re that was the longest race of all time by far. That race brought in the rule for the two hour race cap limit. Yeah, no, yeah, no, really? yeah, yeah. But yes, because it went for five hours and they couldn't stop broadcasting. Four hours, four hours, four hours. But still, piece of shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, it it has commercial implications, and because of that, right. they brought they brought that because um, many channels had to cut, uh -huh, and nobody and many people around the world didn't get to see the end of that race, and it was quite thrilling. It was honest. It was one of the best races. Still, um, people still think that of yeah, uh, especially of at the Jensen end there. Button yeah. as one of the good one, good drivers because of that race <laughs> and because of that race alone. Best drive of his career for sure. Yeah, Button. Yeah, yeah, Button. It was an incredible comeback. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So that's gone. Yeah, that's gone. This year, there's a lot. This is going to be like the year of the penalties. Last year... Oh, yeah. I heard about I, this. I couldn't remember enough enough specific numbers or anything or who it happened to, but... Maldonado. More than once. We were talking about the uh, personnel on grid? Nah, oh, no. Oh, no. Not the personnel on grid. No, no. Sorry. What were you going to say? The Maldonado, like how his points got carried over to the next race. Okay, well, well, let's come back to that because that's that's too big. We'll, we'll work up. <laughs> we'll work our way up. This happened pro probably twice where it went, before the start of the race, they do a grid walk. Mm -hmm. The team's out. The cars come out on track and they keep the tires warm. Start, e start the each engines. Car, you'll see each car is like surrounded by mechanics and shit. Check mm -hmm. all the fuels. There'll be checks there with flags and all the, all those fancy shit is out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually. Before the right before the race, <clears throat> before the warm up lap, there's a 15 second warning. You see, everybody picks up all the shit and runs off the track. But more than once last year, after the 15 second warning, there was either personnel or equipment left on the track. So now this it results in a fifth, uh, sorry, a stop and go penalty of 10 seconds if the driver chooses not to start in the pits. So I guess it could work out strategically depending on uh, right. which position you're in. If you're in one of the top positions, you probably end up taking the 10 second penalty. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, Later you have on. to start in the pits. They do a warm up lap. You come into the pits. When you start in the pits, you wait until the last car has passed you, and then you start your race from the pits. From right? the pits. Yeah. Oh shit! You don't hit the gas until everybody else is. And yeah, gone the past. thing is that like during the pit, like while you're in the pit. There's a there's a there's a speed limit, so you can only go so, so far. Uh, yeah. Eighty yeah. kilometers an hour now, yeah. right? That's not fast at all. No. Well, not for an F1 car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's been lowered. Actually, it's even lower at some tracks. At, at Monaco. Yeah. Another one. Penalty is for another thing that happened a handful of times last year for unsafe release. There's a, mm. there's a lot of rules this year that have been brought in because that, of 
Yeah, okay. Because of safety, but that penalize the driver for team mistakes or team personnel Mm. mistakes. So if there's an unsafe release, like, uh, say, like, the tire bolt doesn't get tightened all the way and the tire's loose or the tire comes off Mm -hmm. and the driver drives away unsafely, that's a 10-second penalty plus... An additional, I think I gotta get this word for word here. There's an uh, additional penalty at the FIA's discretion. Oh my God. If he drives away and they deem that he knowingly did it with the unsafe release. These bureaucrats, man. So if he drove that away. That sounds like horse shit. Yeah. It just sounds like. <laughs> That's like anybody, yeah. like, if, if you're angry at a driver, you can be like, I don't like this guy. Yeah, Fuck him. <laughs> yeah. Say, say your bolts, your bolt, That's one of your bolts. old school thinking. Yeah. yeah. One of your bolts on one of your tires is loose. You drive away, and the FIA says, eh, he, he, he knew. knew. He knew it was he loose. Knew. Yeah. An additional well, penalty at their discretion. Yeah. Well, but uh, oh, an unsafe oh, wow. release can be can be something else. Though. I mean, let's let's oh, just prop act. Yeah, I like okay. this. Oh, he's got the CDs out. The CDs. So let's say <laughs> these are these are these are two cars, right? Yeah. And then oh, or whatever. I mean, first, you go into the pits, right? Yeah. So this car goes yeah. into the pits, and you know whatever he changes his tires or whatever something like that, and it's. The main, like, what what they call the lollipop guy, yeah, of the mechanics. But he's basically the chief mechanic or something like that. Okay, it's his responsibility to make sure that when everybody's done their job here, he, this driver can go on like rejoin. But it has happened more than once that everybody's done their job and like I guess like in the rush in the heat of the race, the lollipop guy go uh, says go 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 and. As this car is coming, there's another one. Uh, there's another car trying to go to their garage, uh, and that also constitutes as an, as an unsafe release. Correct. So I guess they could say, "Oh, you know, you knew the other guy was coming. You could see it through the rearview mirrors." But really, I mean, that's so. There's so much. I, I feel like there's yeah. already so much shit going on yeah. for the driver to pay attention to. Exactly. He shouldn't have to be punished for. What, like, what should just be a, a team bad op- well, Yeah, but even yeah. just like a bad opportunity, right? Or, or, or a bad judgment call. Yeah, no, but just, they, it seems like they're really, really trying to crack down on that. Something I was saying before the show, like this book, this thick book here, the FIA regulations, is written like law. It has oh, words yeah. like will and shall and should mm. and could all in one and sentence. When <laughs> yeah, and when. And notwithstanding, and subclause, oh and appendix, God. and all these types of words. And these types of books are meant to be interpreted. For yeah. better or for worse. <laughs> Apparently. For yeah. better or for worse. That's the way it works. Uh, let's backstep to something simple like qualifying. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think this was defined in the rules last year, but they just kind of agreed that. If there are 24 cars on the grid, the FI is dreaming, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and Q1 and Q2, seven cars will be eliminated per round. If there are 22 cars on the grid, six cars per round, 20 cars, five on the grid, etc. Down to 18, there will be four cars eliminated per Q1 and Q2. Round. So in- instead of taking like so the... You're, you look very confused right now. Yeah, yeah. There are three qualifying rounds. Okay. Of... 18, what are they, 18, 12, 15, and, and 12 minutes? No, no, no. 18, 12, oh, right, right, right. No, I think yeah, you're right, right, right. It used to be 20, 15, and 10, but now they change it to 18, 15, and 12 minutes per round. Okay. We're in, in the first round, Q3, every car just goes mad. There's eight, an 18-minute block. Oh, that's Q1. Sorry, yeah, sorry, the other way around. Q1 is an 18-minute block. Every car goes out on track. You try to get a gap wherever you can and make the fastest time you can. All at the same time. All at the same time. Well, or not. Or in so that 18 minute block. Yeah. So, so some people choose to go like when there's not enough tra- when there's not a lot of traffic. Because ah, they, okay. they, the, the teams are also giving a set amount of tires per race weekend. Ah. Right. So some some it's if especially and you see like the the top teams doing this, they say they don't go out right away all the time. Mm-hmm. They they save it to like the last five minutes because they know they're gonna be up there competitive because they know they have the equipment. So and they don't they'd rather not be bothered wasting tires mm-hmm. that way. But yeah. anyway, okay, yeah. So yeah, you can use your tires however you want. Q one eighteen minutes. Uh, I guess um, guess there'll be what twenty cars on the grid this mm-hmm. year. Maybe 18 at sunrise, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so there should be 
five cars eliminated after Q1. The next round is 15 minutes. So the remainder of the cars will go out on the track mm -hmm. in that 15 minutes, do the best time they can. The bottom five again will be eliminated. Like from the whole race? For, for the race? Oh, no, for the no, just for the the, the, okay. Their positions get locked. Ah, the posi oh. uh, yeah. So their time, yeah, their time gets locked. Like, oh, yeah, just fly your car down just in case you don't make it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. here's a ticket home. Like. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess can, if all cars are on track, I guess it should be 10 cars on Q3. Okay. They get 12 minutes to place their best time and... Those are the top te top spots for the race. There can the, the scenario that you're talking about though can happen, and they call that the one the one oh seven percent rule. So if right. any car is over, like so they they take the time of the fastest car in each one of those sessions, and if any car is below the one one hundred seven percent, so you know if if a car do it that does it in one minute mm -hmm. uh, a lap, then one minute you take that you multiply it by one point oh seven. And if any car is slower than that, then they don't get to race at all. Then yes, yeah, they have to be within one hundred and seven percent. That is just to make sure that people it's a good that race. are yeah, <laughs> that it's gonna be a good race. Exactly. Again, this is a law book meant to be interpreted. <laughs> there have been cars in the past, right? In the recent past, that have broken outside the one hundred seven percent rule, and they got like a special dispensation. Yeah, they've gone to some sort of arbitration and said, "Look, we made the hundred percent." 107% the last so many weeks. Mm -hmm. The yeah. car is capable of it. We had a bad yeah. day. Okay. And then, like, okay, you can race anyways. <laughs> that that basically happens. Happens. It could happen. It could happen. It okay. could happen. Another super simple change to this year's regulations that I think everyone is quite happy about is the double points rule. Gone. Oh, yeah, is that like uh, Call of Duty double XP weekend? Yeah. Well, there, there yeah. was. It. <laughs> it would it would be yeah. Last year was some oh, sick. bullshit yeah. like that. Yeah. Right. Well, it is nothing changed. Just during this one race at the end of the year, the the very last race, um, all the points got multiplied by two. So the, the winner <laughs> like is like arbitrarily. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Just all. Well, it was defined before the season started. Everybody oh, knew okay. it was going to happen. Oh. Okay. So they're like, yeah. oh, this is a double. This is a double point. Double yeah. point weekend. The yeah. thing is, be crazy. between first and second place, yeah. first place gets twenty five points. Second place gets 18. So that means that on double points weekend, first place gets 50. Ugh. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's like a 7, 14 point bonus really over your number. A, a lot of people like said that, you know what? I mean, that that could have maybe worked if you're talking about like not a regular race. If you had to do something else, something else that like, you know what I mean? Like if it was, if it was for some reason, just like a crazy circuit, either a crazy circuit mm -hmm. or they had to do something crazy. But no, it's just, it, it was just, another race when they arbitrarily like up the points um, by two so yeah that that got scrapped yeah yeah they got they got rid of that because it and, made no difference uh, as to like how the championship ended in the end right it really made no difference i think it could have for some for for like certain drivers certain drivers but not 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 like the champion mm -hmm. yeah. yeah is it not as artificial as the uh nascar cup chase Bullshit that we talked about oh, a few that weeks was, ago. Fuck yeah. I, remember that? That is. I five tried not points. to. <laughs> Beyond. Yeah. yeah you go if to you're like, in first for three weeks in a row, yeah. you automatically get 3,000 points. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. That was insane. So, for the sporting regulations, that's almost it, except for the power unit rules, which I think I would still want to get back to because that's a little deep. We'll go to the. Maybe another episode, dude. <laughs> no, we're talking about this today. <laughs> Friday is the, Friday is Melbourne. That's true. Yeah, first race coming up. Anyway. Uh, technical Wait, the regulations. Ra I the race is on Sunday. Well, my, the race oh, weekend starts. Race weekend. The re the yes. It's called the race weekend. <laughs> okay, it's an event. This is a multi day. <laughs> <laughs> you guys in your posh sports over here. I bet you guys watch tennis too. <laughs> you guys no, but fun. lots of Melburnians do. Yeah, yeah. I know they do. Uh, yeah, so as far as the technical regulations, most of these are to do with safety, but some of them to do with testing uh, the Xylon anti-intrusion panels. <laughs> which, I don't know, some space-age material that uh, engulfs, I guess before they had to go up to your chest height or something in the cockpit. Right. Now they come all the way up to the edge of the cockpit, which makes it a bit heavier. This might be part of these uh, weight minimum weight rules that change. Okay. And an additional Xylon intrusion thing that comes up beside the driver's head. Basically, it's like a 
anti-penetration side panels. Ooh. But, Safety. Uh, yeah, basically. The uh, Frick system from last year, m- by the end of the season, most cars... Have, we just started oh, talking no, it, it was it was It was banned by the end of the season, basically. It was, but almost be- before it was banned, it ramped up to the point where almost every car had it. Yeah. Which was a front rear interconnection suspension system. This was the Frick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what you just said. Uh, <laughs> it's this book. I, I lost the page actually, unfortunately. But basically, the front and rear suspensions must only respond to loads which are applied to their own front and rear suspensions. Let me let me bust that CD oh. again. Yeah, uh, out of the so, CD. Ba- you know, okay, so we're talking about um, cars and their braking, and I'm sure you've experienced this yeah. with your car. Um, when when you're like coming to a stop, your car kind of tends to do this, right? Uh, yeah, right. right. And F1 cars are stopping and 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 actually braking is a big part of of the skill of an F1 driver, mm-hmm. and you have to you have to brake at every corner you have to like use your braking properly but if your car is doing that every time that it breaks mm-hmm. then you have a situation let's say this is the side view if the back starts lifting like that a lot mm-hmm. then it just loses a lot of the aerodynamic properties especially the diffuser part right that's so at the back of the car aerodynamics so, what, and, yeah. and grip and grip so, because aerodynamics you lose grip etc etc so you don't mm-hmm. get to approach the corner as you would so what they did before was basically connect um the reaction and the feedback that the front suspension, because at, at under brake against the front suspension goes down and then the, the rear suspension goes up. Mm-hmm. They they connected it. Uh, I think most of them did it uh, via um, hydraulics, so that to stop that. So so that when you when you brake the car, even though there were all these forces at play, you you very very, very minimally little yeah, and and that was deemed okay before, but. Not, but at one point they, they thought that some teams were doing it so complicated and it got so out of hand that it was even not doing just it, it, it was in such a way that it wasn't just preventing that but it was going side to side too and and like and all kinds of crazy shit man so they yeah. had to put a stop to that oh C- shit certain teams had like multiple hydraulic pumps and reservoirs that were transferring forces from corner to corner and <laughs> yeah, vice versa so one of one of the regulations that changed this year is uh i think i think due to this uh xylon rule that the extra safety material had to be in into the uh cockpit which i i think is really light the minimum weight including driver with zero fuel in the car must not exceed or sorry not be less than 702 kilograms this year so it's a minimum weight as a minimum weight. But okay. that got up, raised. Up from 701 last year. Okay. Because Island's probably pretty light. But the thing is, so these, these cars are at a minimum weight, empty with fuel, at 702 kilos. Under full braking, they're reaching about 6 Gs of force and transferring like 300, not like, transferring 300 or more kilos to the front tires. Right. So these Frick systems were able to counter that. Gotcha. All that basically like okay. almost fifty percent of the weight of the car was on top of the front wheels. Oh shit. Right. Which is completely banned now. Yeah. It's completely banned. Of course. Uh well, I don't know. Are you sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quickly, uh wind tunnel testing has been reduced. I gotta look at the numbers here. Uh CFD um complete computed fluid computational fluid dynamics. Oh shit. Yeah. Basically a Ju- a super computer wind- water. <laughs> a supercomputer wind tunnel. Yeah. Okay. A wind well, tunnel like, without the wind. When when they're modeling these cars, obviously, yeah. like they they use all kinds of like complicated like uh, um, 3D programs. But then yeah. then they use this computational fluid dynamics like uh, program to put that 3D model that they did of the car to the test and like just to see how air uh, moves around. The thing it, thing about it is that air and uh, air is a, is, is a fluid. Yeah. Air is very, 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 very complicated um, uh, to compute. Like what what air does. Yeah. Because because there's so many variables, right? Like you're talking about. Yeah. Like yeah. E- each each molecule of air, it, it is sometimes so far apart, you know, that it just you need like big computers to actually like 
recreate reality. Yeah. As my the difference is elevation, temperature, humidity. Yeah. Yeah. Altitude, the way the wind crosswinds, winds, cross, yeah. yeah, crosswinds interact. Yeah, all those things. So yeah, it's like a humidity, rogue. wind gust. They, well, sometimes there are crosswinds. Yeah. yeah, like like just wind like, gusts, like, and you have to account for that, right? When designing a car. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. So basically, actually, it's I was actually surprised the computational limits and hours you can run your supercomputer per week have been reduced this year. From 30 down to 25, the virtual wind tunnel time mm. is reduced to 25 hours, and the computed fluid dynamic teraflops limit is at 25 from 30. This is per eight-week period, and uh, I believe you can run your actual wind tunnel mm. 65 hours per eight-week period. Per week, on average, down from eighty. You, you know what a teraflop is? No. Okay, a flop is like it's a, it's it's a measure of like floating point. Yeah. Fl the, floating point calculation. So the FIA defines them as double precision floating point operations yeah. per second. So that's it's it a little deeper. But okay, so double precision means that instead of using one block of uh, of, of of memory, it's using two blocks of memory. Mm -hmm. What what that typically means is that it's a sixty four bit calculation. So and what that could mean also is that it's it's a number that's extremely large, right? A floating point number in in terms of like raw computer data, yeah. Like it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a number that that's extremely large. So and you're talking about thirty teraflops per second. Those are measured as per second. So it's, if it's if you have twenty five this year, or, or it's yeah, being reduced actually. Even if you have a, like a computer that does twenty five teraflops per second, a processor that that does that is the size of this room or bigger. You okay. know what I mean? Like it's like we're we're still talking about like giant computers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's big. And yeah, bring it more. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the uh, oh, what was I just gonna say? I'm sorry. Did you just blank? Talking about teraflops. <laughs> teraflop. Uh, I just blanked. You flopped. I flopped. <laughs> A teraflop. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's very complicated, yeah, and there's tons of tons of new rules. Basic, uh, basically, uh, there's a loophole that says if you want to change your supercomputer or upgrade it, mm -hmm. or your actual wind tunnel, which includes your fans or your belts or your right. floors, any any anything to do with either of those, you must report the changes to the FIA within one month of making them and then wait for approval but in that meantime you're free to do whatever you want which seems like a bit of a loophole for the teams to have more money <laughs> they can just say at the start of every every there's eight week periods mm -hmm. for these numbers at the start of every one they could upgrade say wait a month say oh fia we upgraded wait for them to come inspect and in the meantime be going nuts and there's also separate rules on the wind tunnel times allowed for testing suspension components and non-aerodynamic components. So as long as your wing's not attached, you can keep testing your suspension <laughs> wings. Yeah. It gets it gets really crazy. Like way too crazy. The biggest the biggest biggest change this year, the final rule change, what is that? Is the allocation of engines and parts. And right. the penalties well, associated with them. Yeah. So this year we're down to four power units from five. Oh, right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're down to four power units from five, unless this was talked from before the season. Unless there was more than twenty races, which it looks like there's probably gonna be nineteen. Yeah. There would be if there were more than twenty signed, there would be five power units. Well, again, this is just the FIA trying to reinforce the idea that reliability should be like up there with pace. Yeah, right. F from reading these rules, though, it seems like reali reliability is probably almost as important as pace if you're going to be running through parts. So the it's, thing just is a it's just a different approach, you know. I mean, so some people were complaining about this and whatever, but really, I mean, most people thought who though, like Honda? No, no, no. I'm, t I'm talking about like anyone, anyone from Team Principles. 
um, uh, to spectators and journalists were saying that it was just going to be uh, a mess when they when they said even five for last year, right? Yeah. When they first introduced the, 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 the new engine regulations that, you know, oh, everybody's going to have tons of penalties by the end of the year. And in reality, it wasn't really that bad. I mean, the Renault teams got hit hard because they were the Renault teams and, and, and the Renault engine just wasn't up there. But I mean, yeah. it, it, you know, like Lotus got a few penalties here and there and um, Toro Rosso, I because think. Because they were running Renaults. Yeah, and, and Toro Rosso got a few, again, because of Renault. Running Renaults. But, but it wasn't the shit show that everybody expected it to be. You know what I mean? No. Like there, there's, there's teams that went like all year with just using their their five uh, engine components here and there and 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 they were perfectly fine so now they're they're obviously okay so they're they're reducing the number to four to encourage more of that reliability right obviously it's it, it comes at a hard time for for Honda uh, it's obviously yeah I, I can see Honda being getting a little worried about that but maybe that's why they were doing that extensive testing what what Toby was describing that what we've seen of Honda is them pushing their engine yeah. to the very limit, right? To just seeing just, what yeah, fails, yeah, yeah. What, yeah let's, all the materials yeah. that fail. Let's yeah, let's let's start replacing one by one by Cheers. one by one, like seeing seeing what fails, what fails, and um and and, and in that sense, I think I think the uh, people give ha the Honda engines and the Honda engineers like I, I, they're a bit skeptical right now, but I think they'll pull through, and I think I think they're actually doing a smart thing right now. All right, but I believe it goes. I think it goes deeper than you might even realize. Of course, I spent. <laughs> I was I was up uh, like two in the morning yesterday looking at this. Uh, it's kind of crazy. They've this year divided the power unit into six parts. All right, where each driver is assigned four parts. Mm. These parts are the internal combustion engine, which is the engine, the, 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 the old block, school engine, the MGUK. Curse. Which is yeah, the kinetic energy recovery system. So that you know it feeds it takes power from braking, basically. Basically. Yeah. The MGUH takes power from heat. Right. This is the heat recovery unit from the exhaust. Mm -hmm. The energy system itself, which is the battery and cabling, I would assume. Mm. The turbo compressor. Okay. Is one separate part. And the control electronics are a separate part. Okay. Which I assume take a lot of heating and current. So you get four per driver. And the interesting thing is, I think was part of last year, but maybe not talked about as much. You're allowed any combination of the four parts right. throughout the season. Right. So say, for example... Your power unit doesn't have to be like the same power unit, even from... We like. Yeah. yeah. So let, let's... Uh, let's take imaginary races let's say the first two races are super hard on the turbocharger right you can use for the first race turbocharger mm -hmm. number one for the second race turbocharger number two and for the third race say it's super light you can go back to either turbocharger one or two mm -hmm. or use a third turbocharger all of them yeah basically. just as long as you don't go over four over the four as okay. long as you don't use four for the whole year more than four of each of these six parts uh, i see throughout the year okay Right. So one thing that I'm sure was part of the rules last year, but I hadn't ever looked this deep. You got that opener again? Yeah. Was that between the time that P3 starts and your car gets onto track, as soon as you go past the end of the pit lane, you're in Park Ferme. Mm -hmm. You cannot change any parts of your engine. Yeah. There is uh, about 15 things you can change, including like starting and stopping the motor, changing oil, make sure you have enough water and fluid in there. Mm hmm. You cannot change any of these six parts in that time until the start of the race. During qualifying and during the race, or between the time of qualifying and the race, you may change those parts, but incurring a penalty. You will not be able to use those parts again throughout the season. Yeah. Except... Unless... Unless you pull them out again at the last part of the championship i got the last oh, race geez. the very last race any parts so each if you didn't know this every single car on the grid has an fia scrutineer who is assigned to that car and he stands there and watches it and if yeah. if by design you have to say remove your turbocharger 
to get at your oil pan or something, something right. that you're allowed to change during Park Ferme. You take that turbocharger off, the scrutineer is going to be standing there. It has to be within visible range of the car and the scrutineer and hold an FIA seal. So <laughs> once any of these parts, like say you use your turbocharger for a race two and change to a second one for a race two, so yeah. for a race one and race two, your first turbocharger will have an FIA seal on it. If that seal is removed or tampered th- with, yeah, the part will be deemed to have been tampered with. And that part is finished for the season. You're done. You take a penalty. You've, oh you, you've used it. They've, they've deemed that it's being, being used. At the end of the race as well, the FIA puts multiple seals on different bolts and yeah. parts of your engine to ensure that none of it can be taken apart or refurbished until you have written permission from the FIA at the beginning of the next competition, which would be two or three weeks away the oh next race God. yeah it, it goes deep that that's some deep shit the penalties <laughs> go even deeper so now these six parts <laughs> yeah of course of course, yeah, the penalty of, of course they do i was so, just being a dickish move it's like it's gonna hurt <laughs> say you blow up you blow up four turbos through the year and you gotta use number one, number five yeah your fifth turbo will give you a 10 place grid penalty so you'll be dropped back 10 places oh my god if you need a sixth turbo or a seventh, any consecutive turbochargers yeah. of that one part will give you an additional five place grid penalty. If you get to, say, a fifth MGUK, that's right. a 10 place spot. Any, <laughs> any fifth part that you use of any of these six on the list gives you a 10 place penalty. If it's so, so wild. what that is is what that means that you get to go through qualifying. They let you do that, yeah. and if you place third or fifth or whatever, add ten to that. So yeah. really, sixteen, fifteen, you know, whatever. Now, how how often does that happen? It, it it's it, it's gonna have to, it's gonna start to happen By towards the, towards the, the end, the end of the year, to, yeah. closer to the end. There, I think there is. I think this twenty fifteen might be the year of the penalty. Oh really. I don't know, man. Well, Danny, this, Danny's calling is, it. He's calling it. You heard it here first. <laughs> it's, it really seems like the FIA is pushing this green thing, uh, reliability and energy recovery mm-hmm. and efficiency. It seems like, like, like you yeah. said, efficiency is almost, especially towards the end of the season, right. more important than your pace. Because if you get a, if you get pole position and you get a ten point penalty because you blew your turbo. On race 17, you're fucked. Jesus yeah. You start Christ. 10 spots you're back. Fuck, bud. <laughs> and there's another, fucked, bud. there's another list of rules right here that what was happening last year is say you qualify in 11th place. Mm-hmm. There's only 20 cars and you get a 10-place penalty. Last year, you'd start in last place. And next week, you'd start again one place back from where you qualified. They would... Yeah, it'll carry over. Right. Yeah. So what's happening this year is if you're unable to take... See, because you could have to replace multiple parts in one weekend. And then you could get 20... You could get 25 places conceivably, 30 <laughs> places. You have to replace a fifth of any three of those parts. That's a 30-place grid penalty. That, yeah. So if there's... But a, there's not even that many... So yeah, exactly. Places, right? So, yeah. so you just... We're, we're, yeah, yeah you just more go debt, more more place debt. <laughs> I'm getting to it. So, uh, what was happening last year was th- these places would carry over, but this year, oh no, they're anticipating so many penalties. That they're just like, well, let's wipe you'd it. You'd be like, yeah, you'd be like at 45 places. <laughs> just oh go God. home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good. Everyone, <laughs> it's like guys, just fucking just call. We're calling it. <laughs> we're just gonna have to cancel that one yeah. forever. <laughs> so, if you're somewhere between one and five places untaken as a penalty for a weekend, you get a five second time penalty added to your, your time of okay. the race. So you, you'll, you'll drive the whole race, finish wherever. And they'll add five seconds. You'll, you'll end up wherever. If you're between six and 10 places, not possible to be taken, you get a drive through penalty. So at some point during the race, you have to come into the pits drive through it and go back into the race which oh, jesus adds actually quite a few seconds oh yeah oh yeah yeah if you have between 11 and 20 untaken grid spots <laughs> for a race weekend you get a 10 second stop and go penalty 
which is new for this year. Last year, the mm-hmm. worst thing you could get was you could get disqualified, but you could get a five second stop and go, which could be taken at a pit. But this might be new this year. I'm not sure if you know okay. that these penalties all have to be taken. Like if, the, if you get if you get something like uh, you run somebody off the track, you have to take that penalty within three laps. Oh, shit. you can't save it to your okay. pits, which I think you could do last year. Yeah. You so could. this these penalties, I think you could use at any you don't have to use it in the first three laps. You can mm-hmm. use them during the race. These are not to do with your driving. But 11 to 20 spots, you get a 10 second stop and go come into the pits, pull into your pit garage, sit there for 10 seconds. Nobody can touch your car. Just like you just have to. Like, yeah. Un- the car is not touchable. You wait 10 seconds and then you can go or change the tires or whatever. And yeah. 10 seconds, like if you're fighting for a position, you're, like, 10 seconds, like we'll get you pretty screwed. Yeah. If you're pretty screwed. Do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I believe section 16.1D, which is also brand new, 20 plus positions untaken. This is like your engine fails. Mm-hmm. You get a undefined time penalty from the FIA. Oh, so the. Oh. It's oh, going to be so something up to, like up, up to their discretion. Yeah, yeah. Probably so something like 20 they, they seconds. still have uh, leeway there to like get it even more. Right. Yeah. And and separately, because they divided these engine into six parts, if you replace the entire unit, mm-hmm. your penalty is start at the back of the grid, which in certain cases might be more st- strategic. Yeah. Right? Because if you replace like three of these. Mm-hmm. Parts you get a thirty place penalty and you fuck. <laughs> you start with you start at the back with a ten second penalty, so depending it might be it, it might be that's cheaper gonna be strategically. Into the, into the strategy. What's I'm up? just gonna do a quick, uh, quick stop cut. a go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we're back. Sorry. One last thing I want to talk about is the gearboxes, because <laughs> this is almost almost as crazy. <laughs> so what was what was up last year? Honda is at a disadvantage this year. The gearboxes are essentially fixed because Mm -hmm. teams used to change their gears even between qualifying and the race. Yeah. And they would change their ratios every weekend to give a different top speed and more torque at the bottom for whatever style the track was. Mm -hmm. As of last year, they were allowed one gear ratio change through the season. This year, they are 100% fixed. Okay. Yeah, that is new. That is brand new. 100% fixed gears. And each transmission must be used. There's a bunch of ridiculous loopholes here again. Yeah. For six consecutive events. Now, there are rules about drivers being replaced. So if a driver is replaced, the replacement driver must continue using the same gearbox as his teammate did in the same car. I got to read directly from the book here. (laughs) <laughs> directly from the FIA regulations. Any driver who finishes, who fails to finish a race at the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth. Why didn't just they just say like first, to, first, first to fifth? That's just being verbose. But anyway, go on. Because it's a legal document. <laughs> the first, second, first, fourth, or fifth, third, or fifth of the six races that the transmission should last and fails to finish, and. A technical delegate accepts that the failed finish was beyond the control of the team or driver. He may start the following event with a different gearbox without any penalty. So as long as they cr- crash, whatever, they can throw it. Uh, every time they crash, they can throw in a new transmission. Okay. After consultation with the relevant team, this is subsection C, the FIA will attach seals to each gearbox prior to it being used for the first time at an event in order to ensure that no significant moving parts can be replaced. But, section D, to change gears or dog rings, excluding the final drive or reduction gears, uh, gears may be changed under supervision by the FIA for reasons other than, for, sorry, for gears other of identical specification at any time during an event, provided that the FIA technical delegate is satisfied that there is evident evidence of physical damage to the parts in question, and that such changes are not carried out on a systematic basis. And you're telling me right now. So this is 
corruption breeding. Oh yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I was thinking. Like yeah. immediately, I thought, like, okay, if if you're a team like Ferrari, like you don't even have to give the guy money, right? Like mm-hmm. you can just like. Like throw him like a, you know a two hundred fifty thousand dollar watch here yeah. and there you know <laughs> you, like you just poke wait. him up you, you know? just wait until the end of P two and tell uh, Kimi or Vettel to do a couple hard shifts and maybe shear off a little bit of the uh, gearing yeah <laughs> where, and, where and, if, out a bit. and if you have and your your FIA hit- scrutineer like on your side yeah then. You're golden. Yeah, as long as you can wear out <laughs> you wear out the gears before P3, which, yeah. uh, as we just learned, starts Park Fermi, then you can open up your FIA seals on your transmission, change your gears for identical <laughs> specs, brand new sharp ones, perfectly <laughs> cut, and uh, you can also change the fluids in your transmission. Jeez. As long as you can ever say it wasn't fully the driver's fault, you can start with a new transmission without having to run it six races. Huh. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, but that's the gist of the rule changes for the year. Oh my God. It's kind of ridiculous. I- I'm sure like all of these things will come to play at one point or another. Oh, mm-hmm. they definitely uh, all will. It's especially because of... They all, all, the, they're the, all the being heavy... changed because they came to play last that's year. True. That's true. That's right? true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 these heavy penalties. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to see, man. I, I, I'm, I think I agree with you. Lot. Like This is going to be a lot this year. Especially Definitely with more than last year. Four power units. Mm. Only you can use them in any order. But if if they fail or if you change any of them after P3, mm. it's done. Yeah. That part is finished for the season. Unless you save it until <laughs> the best one of your failed ones you can pull out at uh, the final race. But yeah. Yeah. So you got to make sure that yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't yeah, know what the, they're going to do. These things have to be very, very well engineered, these these engines. And something I couldn't find is that on P1 and P2 in the cars outside Park Ferme, are these four parts the same four parts? <sighs> is that part of those parts? Maybe maybe that's... I think they are. Who knows, man? Who knows what they're, what, what each team is doing during testing, though, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, the... Wild speculation. The FIA exactly. scrutineer assigned to each car knows. Well, yeah, he knows, but he can't tell. Yeah, something. Okay, let me let me read this quickly too. I was I was just gonna skip this, but within two hours, this this directly from the FIA rulebook now. Uh, within two hours of the end of the post race park family, exhaust blanking plates with one ten millimeter diameter inspection hole per cylinder, and further seals will be applied to all used power unit components in order to ensure that they cannot be run or dismantled between events <laughs> and until between the end of the race within two hours of the end of the race the engine every engine will be sealed up until the car yeah, comes out of the shipping container at the next event when upon request to the fia these additional seals will be removed after the start of initial scrutineering so after everything's been measured and weighed at the next event at which time the power units are acquired all such power units must remain within the team's designated garage area when not fitted to a car and may not ever be started at any time during an event other than when it is fitted to a car which is eligible to participate in the event and finally 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 Mm -hmm. if any of these fia seals are damaged or removed from the relevant components within the power unit after they've been used for the first time, these parts may not be used again unless they were removed under FIA supervision. There's a lot of loopholes in there. <laughs> we, can't, we can't wait to see and find out like how the, how the teams are going to exploit that because that, that, that is what the teams do. The interesting thing to me, the crazy thing, is that all these changes I just went through, which are eight or ten major changes, I guess, they're all within about five or six pages of this whole book. <laughs> all those changes appear within, they're kind of within the same sections and all compressed into about five pages. And, it, and there's the rest of the book for them to, to figure out, you know? Uh, yeah. A lot of which is not available to the public even. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Hido van der God. Yeah, one section not available to the public here. If you want to talk for one second so I can find it. Yeah, actually, you know what? I, w- w- just looking at these cars, uh, and, and especially like the 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 other one, uh, the, the actual safety car, uh, Mike, what, what I was telling you before, it's it's actually really cool to be at a race 
um, because it, let's say Montreal mm-hmm. that we're going to um, the whole the whole weekend um, before and sometimes after there's an F1 event either practice qualifying or the actual race yeah there's there's gonna be support what they call support races right um, which is which is like I mean in Montreal like there's there's there, there's uh, the Ferrari challenge uh, and there's like a few other like races and and so, uh, most of them are really fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some good racing in them. The cars are pretty cool sometimes. Um, but another series, it's like uh, Mini Coopers versus Honda Civics versus whatever it is. Like yeah, I think it's, that's like the, or something. The, the Canadian <laughs> Touring Car Championship. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's it. The CTC. Series. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it fun to watch. Whatever, like, so, and you're there. You're enjoying your beer, whatever. Like, mm. you're enjoying your snacks. It's like then, uh, the opening band, right? The right. Bar. Yeah. <laughs> but then everything goes silent. And like, like you, you, you get you get this this sense of of of, of occasion of this, this sense of like somberness, and then you see the the safety car and the medical car. They are just zooming around the track as they they do before any F one event. Yeah, uh, they do like kind of a, like a reconnaissance lap to yeah, make sure yeah. that everything is. Well, you just got to make sure it's uh, it's yeah. fine, and we're just flexing our muscles. <laughs> make but, sure there's no see- like French fry packets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thrown over the fence. Or- but you see these cars go by, and like you immediately like it's like it, it, I, I don't know, man. I don't know how to explain, but like you, you immediately get it. You're like, okay, everything that happened before, whatever, that's cool. But it's now it's serious. Like, serious. Like this is serious. Okay. This, is, this is this is a this is a world championship event that's about to happen. Like shit just got real. Yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. So we want to talk about Vandergaard? But you you want to talk about him? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know anything about this guy. I, I just think this is interesting. Uh, Appendix five of the regula- FIA regulations are the regulations of the Driver Contract Recognition Board, which are in brackets and quotations reserved for the exclusive use of competitors entered in the FIA. Formula One championship. So not open to the public. Uh, Hiro Van Agad obviously has a copy of this uh, document right here because he, in actually about two hours our local time, I believe, 10 a.m. Uh, Melbourne time, will be decided by the Australian Supreme Court whether or not he gets his drive this weekend. As he signed... That's crazy. No. I don't know, six or eight months ago, he signed a contract with Sauber F1. Mm-hmm. Saying that he was going to be their driver this year. I remember they announced it even. Yeah. Yeah. And they reneged on his deal. Uh, from some rumors and things I read that Sauber couldn't even afford to attend the last couple of races. And by pr- signing like contracts before the season with um, Felipe Nasser and Marcus Erickson, they I were forget- able to like channel the funds. Yeah. Mostly, for- mostly Nasser. Yeah, both of those guys have a lot of money behind them. And I think it was Nasser who his backers gave the team enough money to finish out the season as long as they guaranteed uh, him a seat for this season, 2015. So basically they've reneged on this deal. There's been like some news that if he wins this, that he could force a court decision which would cause the police to sees Sauber assets, including the car that he, this man would be driving for the race, and possibly arrest the team principal, uh, Moesha Kaltenborn, <laughs> which is insane. That's fucked. Yeah, yeah. That's so he, fucking wild. He's basically trying to force his hand here. So in court today, he- though, a few hours ago, uh, Sauber's lawyer's main argument was that the risk of death to Vandergaard himself because he's not been fitted for a seat (laughs) 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 that the normal seat fitting process uh, normally takes two weeks and that he would be a danger to himself other competitors bullshit and the scrutineers and marshals who would be standing around the track but uh, his lawyer obviously is being paid and pulled up precedent, which said in uh, no names given 2012, a seat was fitted in three days by emergency, by rule of an emergency court decision, which they wouldn't give the name. A driver was given a seat 
in three whatever within three days. Okay, I mean, I I like Sauber, and I and I and I and I've said that before. I think I think they're they're, they're a cool team because. They are a team that really only exists to race and yada 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 whatever. Like they're not in the UK, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But come on, uh, the the guy has a contract and it's signed yeah. by everybody. It's it's clearly still legally binding. It, uh, it seems like Sabra was possibly ex- uh, expecting this because uh, from that same article I found. Nasser and Ericsson both have driver replacement con clauses written into their contracts which means that they have no recourse for being replaced at any point during the season even though they've brought whatever money and mm-hmm. sponsorship and backing fr- behind them whatever they have replacement con- clauses and the thing is that uh i don't know a lot about it but that uh, <laughs> uh, I guess one of the speculation is that Sauber's, um, I don't know, one of their responses could be just to pay him off mm-hmm. because he might just want money. But he's married to the daughter of some Dutch billionaire, I guess. Not very interested in money. Plus, he's 29 years old, getting to the middle late period of his driving career. He wants to fucking race. I think I don't know. The, in uh, 10 a.m. Uh, his Sydney performance time. wasn't spectacular. It was there, but it wasn't spectacular. He did he did race in F1 for a year. Performance in this case is negligible, though. I don't have any yeah. whatever. I don't care either way. Like yeah. he's not going to do much. And well, I don't exactly. know. Actually, Sauber actually got some good. That's true. That's true. Yeah, with that new, but, new new Ferrari engine. But whatever. I think uh, he might win this. <laughs> and one of these two guys could if, be fine. If he sticks to his guns, he has a case. That's a, that's the thing, though. If he sticks to his guns and he and he doesn't take the payoff and he doesn't want to settle out of court, he like he he has a case and it's it, it's one of the well, what is it the 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 justice that's going to be proceeding over. Um, she, I think it's a she. She said that like she's basically convinced that they do have a case, mm-hmm. so it, it yeah. will most likely go his way if if he sticks to his guns. Yeah, and it seems like there's precedent against yeah. Sauber's safety, whatever they're trying to push. I don't know. It looks like, well, I don't know. It's going to be after this podcast, but in two or three hours, we'll find out if he's going to be racing. We, I, I have a feeling that we won't really find out until we actually get to Melbourne, because you know how like sometimes yeah. things happen. But, I mean, definitely by the end of this week, we will know <laughs> whether or not he's going to be there at all. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, one thing that's going to be, uh, who's going to be there, though, and apparently we know that they're going to be there, is uh, the old Marusha Manor. Manor yeah. F1. With a very... Maroon and fuchsia. M- yeah, mar- <laughs> uh, did you get a chance to... Um- Check out the uh, F1 show this week on Sky. No, actually. Oh, okay. Well, uh, they, they talked about this actually quite a bit. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, they they, they 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 managed to make it, um, and they I mean, they, they, they just announced their second driver. Um, but I mean, if if you want to go here to the B, yeah, this one. Sorry, yeah, that one. Sorry. That was good. Um, so, so this guy basically, he's he's at the helm of it. He's um, he's a, a British entrepreneur that, as soon as he saw uh, the opportunity, he actually went with his own money out of his own pocket, um, and and he's he's put in quite a bit of money, um, and uh, and and decided to like bring the team back to life. Mm-hmm. Now, this had to be done very quickly. Remember, we we, we said that it might not have happened, might not happen, it might not happen even till Bahrain. We were saying, but but no, they managed to. Probably what they're doing, and and we do have some. Uh, th- there are some pictures on the internet of um, just like one or two mechanics working around uh, a potential chassis. Yeah. If if you look at what most teams have right now, is like a team of a guys. Team, bunch yeah, of guys. Like just like all like yeah. circling the car, but they're, they're working with a very very like a skeleton crew. It's a very minimum. <laughs> the top teams might have like a hundred and fifty guys per car. Yeah. <laughs> Like factory and factory and track. Oh, That's even more. Crazy. But <laughs> it, 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 these guys somehow managed to pull it off. They, probably because they, they, the car was in the development phase already last year before they went bankrupt. So they probably just pulled some of the old files, reshaped their current F or their 2014 F1 car mm-hmm. to fit the minimum of the regulations. And they got first this guy. So the next tab over. 
this guy, Will Stevens. Yeah, now, he, this, he, he popped up on the um, the F1 show this week too, along with I forget the guy's name. I guess the team principal, but I don't think it was that investor. No, but look, yeah, check, he was check this out. Announced. I, I want I want to see the because see this picture here. <clears throat> Will Stevens is wearing if you can hear if you can see here around his neck. Yeah, a, like he's wearing the <laughs> caterham um, undergar, like the the the, the fire. Uh, proof shirt and it is because um if you remember last year um in abu dhabi for the last race he was there he was in the car uh i do remember he pay, he basically paid for the seat um they, they had a seat for sale and he yeah. so he's i i'm, I'm not sure i mean I, I didn't want to spend too much time looking looking into it i only like tried to like look for like five minutes i don't know where his money comes from i don't know what his biggest sponsor is i think he had to do that because i'm i don't know the date i think it was if you look at the first page of these uh, fia regulations mm -hmm. it looked like a lot of this came into effect on uh 29 june 2014 well that's when they released it right not all of this is up to date but part of the new super license rules mm -hmm. Uh, we talked about you need two years experience in lower right lower formulas blah blah, blah. you also need I believe a minimum 300 kilometers right, yeah, in no, a you, you, you current won't. current year car, current spec car. Yeah, you, you or a previous year. I believe okay, also okay. a previous year car yeah. is okay. Yeah, I, but it, that's, that's kind of been the way for a while. Well, and that's what that's, they do. That's what they do but, testing and whatever. But that's yeah, why he needed. Yo, this. Oh, he definitely needed the, the, the kilometers to get his super license. Um, but basically, uh, Manor obviously is using him. Like he's got money somehow. I don't know if it's yeah. because of sponsors or because of personal wealth. I'm not sure. I, I guess that will eventually come out. But the thing is that um, his track record um, in, in the junior formula is not that brilliant. Some people are calling him, uh, basically saying that it's going to be like another Max Chilton. <laughs> <laughs> you must have had enough points, though. Well, yeah, he, he, he exactly. He, I guess he, he, he accrued enough points. Um, but this guy that they just picked after after him. So actually, you know what? He was driving at an event last year. He must have went. That's true. Oh, yeah. Shit. So yeah. What? Nothing. Okay. 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 <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. So the the second driver of Marussia that they just picked. Um, this guy I don't know anything about. He actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, I saw his picture before we started here. To me, he looks like. Uh, I call him Ham Alonso. <laughs> He's got like the in this picture for uh, sure. older Alonso hair with kind of like the Lewis uh, smile and even the eyes kind of, and <laughs> the same haircut, the same hair color as my cat. <laughs> the, the tortoise, tortoise yeah. shell, whatever. <laughs> but he, he actually has a way better record um, um, than than uh, um, uh, than our boy there, Will Stevens. Um, th the thing is that Will Stevens, okay, like he 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 made a splash in in Formula Renault, three point five maybe, but he like he, he finished fourth um, in that one. That was that was behind Magnussen. Um, Magnussen, uh, Stoffel Van Dorn, and Antonio Felix Acosta. All of them were faster than Will Stevens. Um, and I think uh, one of his best um, uh, career results, um, it, it, it basically, he, he hasn't won a championship. That's the deal, Will Stevens. This guy, though, uh, Roberto Meri of Spain, um, he has a bit, a bit of a better background. Like he's, like he, he has won uh, the championship of the the 2011 Form Formula Three Euro Series, which is basically where um, Lance Stroll is going to be racing this year. Right. Yeah. So, <coughs> so he's he's won that, and, and Formula Three Euro Series. Like from there, uh, they've taken the likes of um, uh, Verstappen, that's racing in F1 this year. So he has he has a, a bit more credentials. And that's why he says he says that he's happy that he's that they've selected him based on pure uh, on talent. Now, right, I guess well, so obviously he's not paying to, for his drive. Right? Yeah, that's. that's what, I, I think that's that's what they're that's hinting what I'd at. Like to see. Yeah, I think that's what they're hinting at. But it's not that least, clear cut, man. It's not that clear cut because, yeah. um, he like at the end of it, he is Spanish, and and since Fernando Alonso won his two titles in 05 and 06, um, the the. the Spain went from basically being a, a country that mostly cared 
about um, motorcycle S- racing. I was mm-hmm. gonna say soccer. Well, well, obviously, obviously <laughs> yeah. soccer. Yeah. But as in terms of in, yeah, in terms of motorsports, mm-hmm. the the big one in Spain was uh, MotoGP, like motorcycle racing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it went from that to Formula One, and now Spain like is is one of the countries that a lot of attention is is being put in Formula One, and Formula One is in in, in, in all the channels. And people, you know, the image of Fernando Alonso is is like Alonso is one of the biggest sporting heroes uh, in Spain right now, and because the Spanish people are interested in F one. Having a Spanish driver wouldn't be too bad of a move if you want to attract sponsorship, especially one that kind of looks like a lot. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if 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 you can sell it like, oh, maybe this guy's gonna be the future Alonso, or like he's gonna be, he's when Alonso eventually leaves the sport, maybe this guy's gonna be uh, yeah, fighting yeah, for some yeah, victories yeah. here and there. He's got a long way to. Uh, Alonso was one of the highest paid athletes in the world. Yeah, like so, a year or two ago. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I'm just saying this. This is. The, even though he 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 does have better credentials than Will Stevens, it may still be a, a move because, and I say this only because they they also announced their development driver, and their development driver is this um, uh, British guy Jordan King, and just like his career history, even last year, uh, he was the champion of the British Formula Three International Series, three poles and four wins, eight podiums. Uh, the uh, for the FIA European Formula Three just last year he was a top rookie uh, with two podiums one fastest lap um, he did GP two testing I mean and 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 it goes on like if you go uh, going down to uh, twenty twelve um, he did the Toyota Racing Series fifth overall with one point one win that was uh, when uh, uh, Stroll was there uh, earlier in the year so he he actually seems to be like a more competent driver even than him or at least at his same level. Do you know how old these three guys are? No, I don't. Uh, actually, well, Will Stevens, um, he is 23. 23. Yeah, Roberto Murray is also 23. Um, I don't know about um, uh, this King guy. Um, but he is, I mean, uh, Jordan King, he, he looks pretty young. Find it quickly. I'll talk for one second. Sure. I can find his name. Yeah. Um, one thing I'm, I missed about uh, the rule changes for this year is that uh, last year there were four in-season tests, <clears throat> and uh, it's gonna it's being reduced to two this year, and uh, I guess I guess we'll see because part of the new rules is that all of the testing must be conducted in Europe, and uh, this was originally decided to save money because la- but I guess caused problems like obviously with the Alonso crash. Um, and whatever, a couple other spin outs that happened because of cold mm-hmm. tires and low temperatures. He's, everybody's in winter jackets. Last winter, mm-hmm. they did preseason testing in Bahrain, where you're closer to most of these races are in the summer, southern, northern hemisphere, wherever they're racing. <laughs> they're in the warmth. So I guess what, whatever, the rules say that to test outside of Europe, um, it requires the unanimous decision of all teams. Okay. But part of the part of this this year has been reduced to two in season tests, four days each, and half of all the testing days must be reserved for young drivers who are not, I guess, assigned to your team. So it makes is, a lot of sense. Which is awesome. Mm-hmm. That's why I want yeah. to see these guys' ages. Yeah. ages um, you're gonna see King is twenty one. The in season testing you're not gonna see on half the days, the current drivers will not be in the cars. Right. He's 21 years old. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. yeah he's 21. Um, yeah, so that's that. That's it for uh, for for Mar- for Marusha Manor. They're gonna be there. We'll see how they do. I mean, they're so they're gonna be running a, mostly a, a, what I think is gonna be a 2014 car with a yeah. 2014 engine, and we've seen already how much faster the 2015 spec cars are. Right, that's one thing that we talked about at the end of all the testing, right? How like they were just incredibly fast. I I do hope all the best for them. I do want to see them racing um, during the race weekend and, and actually on Sunday. But will they make Q3? Will will actually will will they make the one hundred seven percent? I don't know, man. I think that's a big question mark. Still, I guess you haven't seen it yet. For uh, anyone that's a fan, you can find on YouTube. For I I watched it on Sky, but you can find on YouTube in uh, you know what I mean, non uh, <laughs> copyright infringing way it's about this big of the whole screen you can you can watch the f1 show on youtube 
it's worth watching just the interview with um, Manor because they answer a lot of these questions actually, but in a roundabout way. But of course, they they are expecting to have their new car out. I guess sooner than the media is projecting, anyways. Okay. I don't know. Whatever. They they surprise everybody. They're showing up in uh, Melbourne on Friday. That's true. Yeah. That, that that's that's already a big big achievement. So they've uh, got their thirty million. They've got their. We talked about last week. Bernie's giving them an advance on their uh, prize money. That's right. Yeah. Actually, a pretty big advance. <laughs> Chump charity, but that's fine. Yeah. Whatever. These guys. This dude looks ready to race, anyways. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the other dude seemed more like a. He does. The British dude. What's his name? Uh, Stevens. Will Stevens. Will Stevens. Yeah. He seemed, he seemed more like a media type. <laughs> like they might have chosen him for that. Reason. And and for the money. And his money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's not forget that. It's money. <laughs> so um, that's it about what has happened. Now we get to look forward to the season. Oh my god. I'm excited. Couldn't, so Couldn't close. Come. You guys Fast gonna, enough. You guys are going to pop my F1 cherry. Yeah. <laughs> it's so close. Yeah. <laughs> so close. It's so it's so good. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this in in many ways has been like one of the shortest um uh, off seasons. Like we talked about that, right? Yeah, it seemed um, that way. well in actual physical weeks of hours of time that have passed is actually I think shorter than last year. Yeah. Actually, but it seemed like it too for sure. It's it also seemed because of of everything that was going on. It it has been a, a a very interesting preseason, but I'm glad it's over. I'm glad we we got all of that out of the way and we can look to the racing. Yeah. And, I, and 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 it's starting I'm this pretty Friday. I am pumped. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm not gonna miss a single what, second. Um, what are you looking forward to most? about uh, the season I want to see I want to see one I want to see I want to see Kimi Raikkonen beat Vettel okay. on, 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 the, on the Ferrari it's not going to happen it might happen um, but <clears throat> we just watched this before the show if anyone was I guess a lot of you guys are Redditors who might be listening to us if you saw yesterday Monday uh, somebody posted a link uh, possibly the highest downforce F1 car ever at Albert Park and there's a video of Vettel taking a lap, basically at like 90% full throttle, almost losing the car at one point, not lifting. I don't know. I'm, I'm a Vettel cheerer on it, but <laughs> if you, when you watch that from 2010 and you compare it to a bunch of 2014 polls that happened, it seems like he lost some balls. Uh-oh. Something, Possibly, something happened, man. For sure, something happened, and I, and I remember. But there's rumors of him being back. Yeah, but 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 are they true? But yeah, rumors maybe of maybe him being back. Maybe maybe the the, the he's he's revitalized um, at Ferrari. But I agree with you. Yeah, something something clicked off. Um, and Vettel said definitely, and it was very evident last year. Yeah. Um, which is crazy for like such a young guy in 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 terms of F one. Like he, he, he was the pole man too. Like, yeah. As as well as winning all the races and championships, he was the pole man. He he fucking pressed the gas every track, every track. We'll we'll see how he does with with his Ferrari. But I honestly, I, I so I that that is one inter-team battle that i'm looking forward to seeing mm-hmm. nice. the 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 mercedes inter-team battle so between uh, lewis and nico um that's we, we've seen that it's going to be a continuation from last year uh, it's going to keep things spicy at the top end so at uh, the first you know number one and two it's always this year is going to be very exciting because of that mm-hmm. but i think that the, 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 what people want to see, what I really want to see, is what's going to happen at Ferrari, and what's yeah. what what is Alonso going to be able to do uh, at McLaren? And I'm almost, I'm honestly, I'm almost. If he even makes it to Malaysia. Right, right, exactly. But I'm almost, He's, I'm almost not happy, but um, I'm not so disheartened that 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 uh, McLaren Honda. Don't seem as dominant from the get go because you're gonna see Fernando because you picked him in fantasy F1 and you think they yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're gonna you, get some you, extra points out of that. I think I think you're going to see some brilliant drives from Alonso trying to wrestle that 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 McLaren Honda into submission. Um, not 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 in Melbourne. Melbourne mm. uh, Magnussen is gonna be driving and he he got he got he got third place last year. So it's it's a track that we know that he at least likes. Um, and he's yeah. been he's been testing, uh, so yeah. he's 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 in the machine. A lot um, of people are surprised that he didn't take over for Button <laughs> to, 
for the whole season. Yeah, so so we'll see we'll see what happens there too. Maybe so that, that, he doesn't look as good with a clean shave. Maybe <laughs> the Gillette. That's that's gonna be that's gonna be another interesting one Gillette? just to see. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's got the ball. It got it's got, it's got that that one ball. <laughs> What what else am I looking forward to? Well, I don't know. What are you, what are you looking forward to the most this week? This weekend in particular. This weekend in particular. Yeah. Shit. I, honestly, I really I really love this track. It's it's fun. Um, it's got a lake in the middle. Yeah, there is a I lake. Saw a picture in, of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like a it's a big lake. I had I didn't I had no idea actually. Well, well, let's uh, you want to yeah, pull it up? Pull it up. You want to talk about yeah. this a little bit? Pull yeah. up the the first picture there. The photograph. There it is. Big uh, cock and balls shaped lake. <laughs> Uh, right there, <laughs> with uh, a, with a bonus like scrotum, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bonus scrotum. <laughs> this is this is cool. Yeah, it's a big park. It park in the middle of like you can see it's in the middle of Melbourne, Mel Melbourne, Melbourne, Melbourne. Mel uh, Mel let's Mel talk Melbourne. about this preseason a bit before we get too deep into yeah, Melbourne. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. I think um, I'm honestly I'm worried for my fantasy league because I thought Nasser was a really good. I'm giving away maybe too much. I thought Nasser was a good pick. A I'm gonna win anyways. <laughs> <laughs> That's his spirit. Sauber's ah. powered by. I don't even remember what I picked. <laughs> Sauber's powered by Ferrari. When you look in the fantasy leagues, he's cheap. He's got potential. A lot of people picked him though, but, because of that. Yeah. Well. <laughs> That's good. Whatever. If I had a guard here, it might fuck him over though and take his spot. That's true. I think. I, well, I don't know. He's a newer guy, but I think he. If they had a choice, they'd probably kick. Ericsson, I don't know, because Nasser's got the money. It's hard, I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to say, though. Ericsson has some money, too. I don't know. It's interesting if you follow... Um, <clears throat> there's been a bunch of stories about Hamilton's hip-hop hip hop career. Oh, I've heard. Time. I've heard. And uh, in a lot of those, he's been emphasizing his uh, impenetrable, impenetrable resolve and his new attitude. <laughs> there is a bit of a... I think if you have to say that, yeah, I don't exactly. think I think it's impenetrable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was penetrated last year. Like, uh, there's over a whole bunch and of over. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of controversy in Monaco about uh, Nico Rosberg fucking him over on his last qualifying lap. Mm -hmm. He ruined his position and then crashing into him into uh, in Spa. And the, actually, if you haven't seen, I, I think the. Um, F1 show this Friday was the first time that Sky has used the same song but a new intro, new CGI graphics. Oh yeah, they do the the uh, the whole uh, tire delamination from last year is gone, which is bullshit. That was pretty awesome. Bye. But they they replaced it with the Rosberg Hamilton incident. Oh yeah. But basically, Hamilton's been saying that that strengthened his resolve. It it solidified him. And basically, from then on, he was he mm. was indestructible. He destroyed Rosberg, and he's saying basically that that shit's not gonna work this year. Mm. Ros Rosberg Good tried for to him. <laughs> yeah, well, Rosberg tried we'll, to put some games on him. We'll see. We'll see though, because <laughs> we'll yeah, see. yeah, we 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 will see. He's a pretty emotional dude. Yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, he is still pretty emotional. Um, I don't know. I think Vettel's probably gonna be at Raikkonen. We'll see. About even that. though I don't know, there's some variables. This. Ferrari being designed for Raikkonen, as we discussed with the Tangerines. They're both parents. Mm. They're both parents now. <laughs> Vettel's lost some balls. We got that YouTube video there. We can't play no, it. Can't play. We can't play it on the show, but you should check it out. 2010, Australia, Melbourne GP, pole lap, Vettel. Find it without commentary if you can. It's interesting to watch. Um. I don't know, man. Other than that, <clears throat> midfield, I would say, to be honest, I think uh, Williams is, at least for the first half of the season, is going to be yeah. beating Ferrari. That's going to be the main yeah. competition. That, that's, you know, Bottas. It's, they're, they're, yeah. it's hard to, I think, Bottas beating Massa. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ma but but that's that's going to happen. And, and you know, Felipe Massa might not like it. Um, but he is he, he had his opportunity it's probably gonna be maybe his, oh yeah he's been in there for like 10 years he has his, he, he had his opportunity to be the champion of the world and he he was actually for 20 seconds there um <laughs> but uh, he, he he is i don't want to say he's past his prime because a lot of people say like oh you know Philippe is back and this and that but I don't know. he's he's not he, he didn't demonstrate last year um 
a sustained performance race to race. He was he was yeah. brilliant at some races. He will, and then he wasn't at others. I think that Bottas as a is definitely a more reliable bet, and he has that consistency. The year before too. When he was with Ferrari, it's the same thing. He was inconsistent. Yeah. He be he managed he actually he made Alonso look bad on a couple right. qualifying laps and stuff. Yeah. Then the race came and he just crashed or lost a bunch of places or couldn't hold it together. Yeah. Uh, he's he's not the guy anymore. Yeah. It's the, the new guys, especially it's reflected in this year's testing rules. Mm -hmm. Half the days have to be given to young drivers yeah. who are not racing this year. Now, non one competitors. One thing I I don't remember if this was oh actually um, a comment that I that I replied back on uh, on on a, on a YouTube video a few uh, yeah either last week or a couple of weeks back um, to somebody that yeah, this just brought it to mind and it said they were saying okay well it, it would be fantastic. Um, to see Ricciardo come back, but uh, but 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 now we're seeing that maybe the Red Bull, because of all this engine, like the the, the whole engine talk with Renault, that we might we're probably not we're we're expecting Red Bull not to be very competitive. If anything, not not the first part of the season. Um, and and I brought I brought up this point is that yes, Daniel Ricciardo, everybody everybody likes him by now. Um, everybody wants him to succeed. Redditors again. <clears throat> there was I actually missed that. I would have participated. Yeah. There was a Reddit uh, annual preseason poll mm -hmm. from the U.S., Europe, Australia, every right. every continent. Ricciardo was by far voted the most popular driver. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. It, it, <laughs> that's it, what's that? <laughs> the, 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 two, the two miles mile, the ten miles mile. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's so yeah. But it, it, it's it would be fantastic to like see him win more races. But I think. I think he he had his he had that last yeah. year. Everybody already knows. Like he he's put his foot down. Everybody knows um, that 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 he's somebody to to be watched. Um, whenever Red Bull regained their pace, whenever um, Renault figure out their engine issues, he will be back up there. I don't know if he's going to be winning races this year, but he will be back up there. The That's thing, the, be thing one is, or two years the, the thing is that I I am pretty confident that this year we're going to see Bottas. I think this year, last year was um, was Ricardo. This year, we're gonna see out of the new guys, out of the younger guys, we're gonna see Bottas showing us like yeah. some some race wins. I think that's gonna happen. I think that's that's probably what you said is gonna happen. If anything, at the at the, at the first half of the of both the of those guys got their podiums by like their cars were basically like next. They were like fourth and fifth place mm -hmm. fifth and sixth place cars. Yeah. They both got, uh, both has, he got his podium in Canada, his first one, right? And yeah. then uh, Ricciardo, his first win in Canada. Mm -hmm. They got those when the other teams had trouble. Right. So I think, well, what I think Williams has done a turnaround in the last yeah. two years, but like Bottas power. And uh, I think, I think Ricciardo is going to have it tough, man. Like there's this talk about, um, Renault possibly taking over Toro Rosso as a as a factory team or yeah. possibly I don't think it'll happen, but build their own car or buying up Sauber or buying up Lotus. If and at the same time, Red Bull dropping <laughs> Renault like everybody else has. Yeah. And hiring Caterham to build a Red Bull powered engine. Either either way, the Ricardo's gonna be forced to go with the Renault path or the Red Bull path? I think and I think I think Ricardo is actually going to be snatched by a different team in in the near future. But, I, uh, I, but that's I want to put. Not, I, wanna, I don't think that's in his. Well, maybe it is in his interest. I don't know. But no, he might be. Like if let, they, let, but, let's say let's say Ferrari comes back this year, and then he they, might be doing that for less money though. The other teams would probably be willing to pay him more to keep him. Renault. Wouldn't it, wouldn't or it be Red funny Bull. though? Wouldn't it be funny though that if 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 uh, let's say Ferrari comes back and, and Ferrari is looking like uh, a very attractive team next year, and they snatch Ricciardo to put him beside Vettel again? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be like, I think this will probably be Reckoning's last year. Oh yeah, I think so too. He's not getting the championship, and then he'll move, unless he'll, he he'll go to whatever rally race. He'll do something more laid back, less time consuming. I'm sure. Unless unless he does like a mad massive turnaround like uh like i guess like what like what williams did from like one season to another unless he's like oh my god i'm gonna win the championship next year yeah other than that he's he's gonna do something that's less time consuming he's a uh, in his mid-30s now he's got a kid yeah it's not gonna be wanting to travel around like this 
No, for sure. Yeah. Um, Mike. Um, I think I think it's also time. I mean, it's, it's 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 our it's our, it's our tenth episode. Yeah, uh, of the, the season's podcast. about to begin. Okay, to begin. you ready? Let's. Well, let, 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 let's look back at what we have learned, and let's look back specifically at what you have learned in these times. Because you <laughs> arrived, <laughs> you arrived. <laughs> Keep talking at least until I get back from the wash. Okay. <laughs> you arrived uh, at this podcast episode one. Uh, uh, episode with, minus one. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. When we were doing the, t- the 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 couple test runs that we did, um, you came with absolutely zero notes. Absolute zero. Yeah. At, like not you, absolute. You had some idea. I mean, I'm yeah. sure. As everybody well, I know has, what a car is. <laughs> <laughs> so I have some sort of idea. You know, and 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 there was. I mean, I'm sure that you, like most people, have heard about F1 before. I've heard of um, a letter and number beside each other before. That's right. We watched that Rush movie. So you, have, oh, I, yeah, right. Like I mean, but, but totally, but. I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people uh, just watch the movies, thought, oh, cool, fun. Neat. Neat, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's it. But now that you've gotten a chance to like delve into the sport the way that we have uh, over the last few months. Right. Okay. Um, first question. Okay. What, what, just give me your thoughts in general about F1 and, and, like, and how, how has your mentality changed from, from back then, from point zero to now? Uh, oh, okay, well, that's a, that's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, it could be really summarized with um, that video we watched today. Okay. Uh, actually, that like that whole segment, uh, we can say what it is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it, it was uh, uh, Richard Hammond. I think this was in uh, season, I forget which season, season nine maybe oh. of Top Gear. Anyway. Well, uh, five or six years ago? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah five So, or six, so w- watching that video of him going through... Like uh, all of the cars, sort of like the lower, right. lower tiered. I don't even know what you would single call seaters, them. single seaters, yeah. uh, and then going. It, that blew me away, and that made me appreciate it in such a way. I, I, I'm still kind of reveling in my head. Just saying is like the Bugatti Veyron was the fastest car that he'd driven before that. Yeah, which was about one eighth. The power to rate weight ratio of the F one car, <laughs> and the and the Bugatti Veyron is the fastest production car. So, oh, fastest, really? Yeah, it's the oh, fastest wow. street car you can buy. Yeah, that that alone that that video put the whole F one experience so far into perspective for me. But the the problem is, it's like I haven't watched a race. Yet. I haven't watched a race yet. I you am will. still. I, and I I know I will. What, what, what this weekend? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so that has been like. Uh, so, sorry, that video has been sort of playing in my head all day nice. uh, after after we watched it. And so when and now I can I, I can appreciate it a bit more. When we're done this, I'll show you another quick segment um, of Martin Brando. That one's maybe a good about, one, too. Yeah, maybe, but maybe like four years ago, three, four years ago, he got a chance to go to Fiorano, the Ferrari testing track. Yeah. And they put him in one of their historic cars. Which it's a, a 2000s car. Yeah. But... He got the opportunity to take it around a couple laps. He was a, a, a F1 driver. He was one of the dudes. Right. One of the greatest drivers ever. So he gets a chance to drive a modern car. You just see like his opinion. Somebody who can actually handle the, the vehicle. Right. right. No. Totally. <laughs> Whereas Hammond was like, <laughs> yeah, shitting his pants and his head was falling off because he that's, couldn't that's handle the G forces. Well, the, yeah, that's that's the thing that kind of blew me away. It's like this guy who clearly knows a lot about cars, and, right. and driving, right. And he clearly and like yeah, he's blown Richard, away by this whole thing. Yeah, Richard Hammond is a skilled race car driver. Yeah, yeah. he can handle a vehicle. <laughs> he's a Top Gear host, but. Yeah, it's that's like, crazy. It's I'd say out of the out of the three Top Gear above. hosts, he's probably like the most skilled like driver. Like he's like he can do rally racing and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. yeah so, but can he Mario Kart race? <laughs> 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 it's that tricksy blue shell. Yeah, <laughs> that that blue shell gets you, man. It's it's fucked. a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. End of question one. Question okay. question two. Yeah. Question two. So far. From what we've talked about, yeah. If you had to put a beer on a driver for, for Australia, uh, for, for, for Melbourne, for, 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 for uh, Melbourne, I'm, 
Oh, um, I'm going with uh, the Get- Roscoe Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lewis? Lewis Hamilton. Lewis. Yeah. All right, all right, Hamilton. All right. Just, just I don't know something about it. Uh, we talk about him the most because I, f- right. I feel like he's he's the more most interesting person we've we talk about. I find. Oh, he's 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 our our champion is right it, now. Oh, is he the last year's champion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And two time now. But. Oh, two time. 2008, I think, was his oh, first okay. with McLaren. Yeah. And, and sorry, uh, and like, the, sorry, who does he? Who's he driving with now? Mercedes. 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 Okay, right. Okay. Yeah. I, I still Merce- I, I'm Mercedes still, factory team. That's fine. That's fine. And I'm still getting used to like the names yeah. like Vettel and like all these people. Like I'm starting to understand it a bit more. But right. like putting the the car to the person, and it'll get you'll, you'll get there yeah. once you'll you get there. once you see it. You'll, yeah. All my all my you, racing stuff. You put is, the face to the car. And yeah. Yeah. Totally. You'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, I think top of most people's list. Yeah. But really, I guess. Uh, Rosberg beat him a bunch of times last year in qualifying. Mm. He was quick around one lap. Oh, so wait, I, I said who I think was going to win for this Oh, race. yeah, like who you, who you put a beer on? Uh, I put a beer on him. If yeah, it, on if Hamilton? Was, yeah, yeah, on Hamilton. All right. Yeah. Okay, so how about you guys? That's that's who I've got. Okay. Oh, really? For 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 winning the race, I'd, I'd say probably Hamilton. Really? Like, yeah, the Mercedes is just, his car is looking like the best by far. And, okay. And he's coming back strong from like winning the championship. He is probably going right. to win Unless something crazy happens, right? Yeah. Um, what do you like? What do you? What do you like? How would you describe like the speed of a Formula One car? Because some, <laughs> cause some people, because some people may say, and 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 the argument might be valid that other cars, like another racing cars, um, can achieve higher like straight line speed, right? But somehow F one. Is, is different and, and better. You see, I think these new cars are faster than the old generation with the eight gears. Like the highest speed attained last year, I believe, was at Monza by Ricciardo. Right. I believe 136 or 137 kilometers, or 336 or 337 kilometers. Not sure. Hour. No, I'm, don't remember that. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Monza is the fastest for sure. And I believe it was, I'll look it up in a second. I, I believe it was Ricardo, 335, 336, 337. What's, what's higher? What's high? Drag racing? Oh, no. I mean, like there's, super, there's some, super, but no, but some, some, um, even na- some, some NASCARs it, are actually like achieving, like, just like, you know, beating uh, like F1 territory by like a, a couple kilometers an hour. Right. right. Like. But 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 that's like on an oval. But like like how, how, what what's your con- perception? What's well, like concept? Yeah, or, or, or idea. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put it this way. It reminds me of pod racing. Right. In the sense that, nice. um, in the bottom right corner, it tells you in a number how fast you're going. And it, like it's not kilometers per hour. It's some sort of space measurement, <laughs> fucking whatever they use. And the number just kind of keeps on going up. And it actually kind of seemed that way to me. Like that that speed is so like foreign to me. Like yeah. I've never, besides being on a plane, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I don't. I I've never felt that kind of speed. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to judge. Uh, it, it's just that, like, oh, he's going three hundred kilometers an hour. And you're like, <laughs> I don't know how f- that. Mm-hmm. Nothing <laughs> means nothing to me. Like it's just a, a number. Right here we go. I believe this is the all-time Formula One speed record was broken by Ricciardo at Monza in. 2014 at just over 360 kilometers per hour i but that's oh that is that, is that down, that must have been down the speed trap not not average over the, no it's the not the lap. average but it's yeah. the highest speed okay i mean i mean that video we watched with uh yeah. with the the guy that it put it in perspective because sure. you saw like a regular car a single seater, mm. the, the higher up, the higher up, and then finally going to an F1 car. And, right. the guy, and, and the guy who knows how to drive cars is like, holy fucking shit, <laughs> I don't even know what to do with this. And then I was like, if this guy doesn't even know what the fuck to do with this, yeah. how do pod racers know how to do that? No. <laughs> you, no. you know what I mean? Uh, obvious. No, for sure. And and, 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 and that brings it to a point that, um, again, going back to the Joe Say word AMA, yeah. um, he, he said something that, uh, that still stuck with me, is that Formula One... Is, is, is a big event mm-hmm. and Grand Prix are a big event and they and they're big because they have to be big because they they, they should require enormous skill to win You're right yeah whoever wins the race like you have to have enormous skill okay um 
something I, I've been thinking about, and it, it, now it's sort of like as fully formed as a thought yeah. um, about F1 and sort of maybe the North American sort of neglectfulness <laughs> that it has towards it. Right. And it's that, especially with the onset of the internet, uh, ridiculous shit isn't that ridiculous anymore because we're just... We're just we see it all the time. That's true, and yeah. I think we've the, a lot of people just when they see uh, an F one car going down a uh, going down a road uh, yeah. or on a racetrack, no, there is no concept of speed. There's nothing to right. relate it to. Like yeah. whatever perspective it might be, like you're just looking at a car going down. Just like it could be going thirty kilometers an and, hour. And, 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 that, and that is a very interesting point because it's true. The, 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 these cars like. Because the, uh, of the downforce and the grip of the tires, and because you actually you actually get faster overall times around a circuit by by driving smoothly and keeping to the racing line. Yeah, a car if 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 you're not like if you're not aware of its speed. Yeah, if you just look at it on on TV or like in a YouTube video, it doesn't necessarily look fast. It doesn't no. necessarily yeah, look that's, super that's fast. That's it. It doesn't look fast. Yeah, it doesn't. But, but but things that don't look fast, that like Jeremy Clarkson of Top Gear has to say, mm -hmm. usually when it looks like when it looks slow, it means that you're going really fast. Really fast. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like people are disillusioned a little bit by that. Okay. Maybe maybe in North America, I I, I know that it, the sport is a bit older mm -hmm. in other places like Europe and Asia and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel like if people got the perspective and like the ingenuity that goes into these machines, I mean like the drivers that have to train all the time just. Uh, the reaction speeds and uh, yeah, your neck. Like uh, look at uh, <clears throat> Hammond there that when he's trying to just moving up through three or four ranks of lower cars. Yeah, his neck couldn't even handle the turning forces of those. Right, totally. They're like okay, enough with this lower. It's like car. he's gonna blow out his neck. Yeah. Well, like that's <laughs> what people are worried about. Well, what 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 what, uh, what a lot of like drivers say or like this uh, during interviews, like they they like to. Like say this a bit because at certain corners the g forces are so high mm -hmm. that your just your head weighs as much as your entire body, right? Like, mm. and to imagine that, like, this, like that's a good yeah. way to put it. Like, holy fuck! Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's 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 incredible, and I and I and I like that that you've at least learned to appreciate like that aspect of it without even watching a single race. Yeah, I, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> it just it just sort of happened. You've been hanging out with us. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Oh, and then seeing you guys as well, like how you guys appreciate it, because like you guys wouldn't appreciate something if it wasn't worth appreciating, and that I sort of have to respect wow. right away, just because of because I, I know you guys and like you guys wouldn't put all of your time and effort into something that was, you know. Not even not stupid, but like not Ten worth it. You tennis, know? tennis, yeah, <laughs> tennis. That's stupid. <laughs> the bottom right. There. <laughs> is this a tennis court over here? No, I think that looks like a. That is a tennis court. Oh, really? Okay. I, oh, I wait, believe it is. On. We're looking right here. We'll get we'll get into that. <laughs> well, th yeah. Th uh, hey, thanks for that, Mike. Hey, no, no for problem, sure, man. For, for for sure. Um, and and I'm actually looking forward to watching the race with you. Yeah. Th this Sunday. Uh, oh, just, so we, just, do we have plans for that? What do, what do you guys want to do? Oh, well, we're gonna probably gonna come here and watch the race. Yeah, we're gonna in the middle of the night. No, uh, not live. Not live. No, I'm, I'm down. Whatever. <laughs> I know. I know. You stay up fucking <laughs> till all hours of the evening. I mean, if I just sleep when I get tired. Though. Hey, hey, hey. Doesn't, if, ma doesn't matter what time it is. If that's if that's what's going down, guys. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm, guys. I'm I'm down to like well, cause cause it would be what like one o'clock or something our time two o'clock. In the morning, we'll look it up. It's like yeah, we're. What is, I think it's maybe Melbourne's. Maybe Melbourne's maybe fourteen hours. Let's Try see. to find out what's uh, what's the uh, time zone. If it's like completely unreasonable, then I don't, I don't know. Like I, I, I can wait till Monday and do it. Monday during during the day. It no, will, it will. No? Be, it will <laughs> be. Well, be it will be available <laughs> that that same day during the day. Yeah. Yeah, like mon Monday morning, it's up to watch. Oh, even no, even Sunday, like because it's because it happens so early in the yeah, day. I guess. Like Sunday by by the afternoon here, it will be like. We'll oh, be able, we'll we be are to... ahead or after them? <laughs> uh, we, no, I don't know. Like, we're, <laughs> they are they are way ahead. They're like twelve oh, hours see. ahead. Okay, yeah, they're close to the even. I think even more. Yeah. Find out. I think they're close to the dateline. Well, way closer than we are. 
Let me see. You want to do some Melbourne facts? Sure. Yeah, while well, well, I look this up. All right, so I'll zoom in that picture a little bit. This okay, is Albert Park, Melbourne, Australia. Australia. Big financial district. Mm-hmm. A lot of the mm-hmm. biggest <clears throat> companies, etc. The most famous people, the most entertainment. Big the sporting most city. TV shows, the most sports in Australia all come from Melbourne. Uh, I believe Melbourne hosts all three of Australia's international sporting events. One being, I believe that's a tennis court down there. They have the Australian Open, which is like one of five international tennis tournaments. The Melbourne Cup, which is a big uh, fucking horse race. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Australian Grand Prix in Albert Park. And for all you... Uh, it's, a, it's basically like it's a semi-permanent circuit, right? Yeah, it's like a it's like a bicycle path during the year. Oh, really? You can, you can see all that all the black pavedness is the track. Mm-hmm. To the left is obviously a golf course. To the top right, I'm not sure what any of that is. <laughs> Farm, so farmland. It's a big park. It used to be called actually for you South Park fans. Mm. It was called South Park. Oh, crazy! Until 1862, until it was named after <laughs> Prince no, Albert. No, no, no relationship. No, at all. <laughs> absolutely uh, <at> all. not. <laughs> yeah. No relation to Kenny, Cartman, Stan, or Kyle. Um, <laughs> or Butters. Yeah, Queen it's Victoria. A, it's a fast circuit. Cir- cir- it was na- Yeah, it's it's a lot of open throttle. Mm. As I was saying earlier, uh, it was named after Queen Victoria's husband when he died in 1862. Melbourne itself, a very rich, expensive city. The fourth most expensive city in the world. Really? Tied, tied with Oslo. <laughs> yeah, it's rich. Since Shit. like since the eighteen in the eighteen fifties there was a big uh, gold rush in Victoria State or whatever in Australia. Really? And Melbourne became one of the richest, biggest cities in the world huh. at that time. Crazy. And remained that way since. Since yeah. like 05 or 06, they were the second, and since 2011, the most livable city in the world. Which comes with a price, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I don't know, it's a nice place there. Can we go to this next one here? This little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm move sure. over. That's the track map itself. Okay. And they call it 16 corners, but if you look closely, you will see that you are basically never driving in a straight line on this course. Except for, I guess, the start finish Except straight. The- the start finish straight, I guess. I guess. Is so. this the is this the pit? Yeah. What's this? Uh, no, that's that's, that's just, just like another part of it. That's just like a road. The pit's it's kind of like, like that little black squiggle. Yeah. yeah. Um, right down there. Right, right here. Yeah. Five thousand three hundred and three minute meters of glory around. Wait, wait. Lake. How, how 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 long is it? Five thousand three hundred and three meters. Over five kilometers, oh, which oh, makes wow. it which makes it a pretty pretty big track. Most most tracks are like you know five under that. Pretty crazy because when I looked at it, it didn't seem that long. All right, yeah, because right? it's fast. It's a yeah. lot of full throttle. Fastest lap one twenty four point one two five by Michael Schumacher. Jesus, been running since ninety six. I don't know. Um, actually, it's the second biggest city in Australia. You 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 said something earlier when we, when we were talking about this. Million people, and it said. Um, uh, no Australian has ever won it. No Australian has ever won. No Australian has ever placed in the top three in their home race. Although three Australians have won Grand Prix. <laughs> and I'm going to Ricardo tell- Vettel and some other dude. Vettel is not Australian. I mean, Ricardo <laughs> Weber Vettel Weber against Vettel. He's won a couple of races, and some other dude who I'm I don't know. But uh, Weber races for Porsche and endurance racing or something now. He was kind of forced into retirement from ah, F1. Melbourne, Melbourne is 15 hours ahead of uh, of Eastern Standard Time. 15 hours ahead, so it's like way like it's gonna be it's gonna be like so, so, like two, two, so the, the, the race starts at two o'clock. Yeah, so it'll be 11 p.m. over here. Oh really? Oh, we can totally watch it like Sunday night, Saturday night. Hours, yeah. So that would be Saturday night. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, 15 hours oh, oh, ahead wait, of us? This, this weekend? Oh, wait, ahead, ahead of us. 15 hours ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, 11 p.m. Saturday. Oh, shit. What are you doing? I got some. I got some going on. All right. Yeah. 
Whatever. We'll watch it Sunday. It will be available Sunday. Like by Sunday afternoon, we will be able to watch the, oh, the okay. entire thing. Okay, groovy. Yeah. I'm gonna go right now and tell you that what you said is categorically incorrect. What? What did I say? <laughs> What's incorrect? <laughs> that no Australian have has ever won their home Grand Prix. That is incorrect bef- because. <laughs> um, the Australian Grand Prix hasn't always happened in Melbourne. Before it was in Melbourne, uh, like up until the 80s or something, it, it was in Adelaide, Adelaide, in the Adelaide Street Circuit. Um, a lot of like old school drivers really, really, really like that circuit and actually prefer it over Melbourne. I wasn't, I, I, I've never seen any racing around uh, Adelaide, but... What is it? Uh, Adelaide, uh, the Adelaide Street Circuit. I'm not 100%, but I believe that Formula E now races in Adelaide. Could be. Could be. Oh, so I guess, yeah. Yeah, it's Adelaide Street Circuit. Anyway, um, yeah. I, uh, so in that era, in the era when, when the Australian Grand Prix happened in Adelaide, um, one Australian, uh, I forgot his name, but he won four times. But this was obviously, oh. this was like old school F1, like old F1. Okay. Not nothing, nothing in the modern. Yes, in the in the modern configuration at at Melbourne, no Australian has uh, has won it. That is correct, <laughs> but it's not the whole truth. <laughs> at Melbourne, <laughs> right? Um, uh, what else can we say? Well, I mean, just other than other than us being really hyped, really excited. Wow, what 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 about you? I mean, other than Mercedes, what's your non Mercedes pick for this weekend? For qualifying, let's say qualifying and for, the race. For quality, like I don't know. Realistically, I think third third is probably going to be Bottas or Massa. But I'll take Bottas, Bottas all season over Massa. And um, fourth, fifth, I'm looking at Vettel over Raikkonen. Beyond that, it's really hard to tell, man. Like I don't know. A lot of people are talking like, "Oh, Ricciardo is going to be." Pulling out or whatever, but I don't know. I think that's a lot of. You can't base it all on the driver. The Renault engine's not doing too well. But see, okay, so so what you're th- what you're saying is that you you're saying that it's gonna be two Mercedes, then two Mercedes, then two two, two, Williams, two Williams, and then two Ferraris. At least one Ferrari, and be after that, I don't know. For qualifying, for we're talking about qualifying. For qualifying, race. yeah. For the race, it's uh, you can. <laughs> I, have, I have no idea how many cars are gonna make it the to entire the, race length finish yeah to the finish of the race how many cars are gonna make it how many mclarens are gonna make it uh, i would say probably neither of them will finish the race i'd say both of them you think they both i think they're both gonna make it they might just go super careful like it's worth it's better to finish whatever like 90 percent and get classified 19th and 20. It might be a sentimental thing for me. I mean, and, and against everything that Toby told us on Sunday, I yeah, think yeah, you're just in love with a lot. <laughs> I think <laughs> that Mac- that McLaren Honda is gonna show like it's actually gonna show their true face for the first time in Melbourne. I hope so. Mm-hmm. Get this value of my Accord pumping. <laughs> Six thousand bucks. <laughs> EXL every option. Call me. Uh, <laughs> I haven't got any calls yet, guys. Come on, <laughs> this car is available. It's got new tires. It's got a new battery. You can say it has a new face too. Uh, no, <laughs> no, you can't say that. <laughs> you can't say that. Um, what 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 else do we got going on? Okay, so I I actually think number one that that McLaren is actually going to surprise us, and <laughs> I think also. Um, that Kimi Raikkonen is going to be Vettel. So. This weekend or all season? No, no, no. This weekend. From the get-go. Like, I'm, I'm not sure about the rest of the season. I'm going to have to see, like, his hips. But I think at the at the end, at the checker flag on Sunday, um, Raikkonen is going to be, is going gonna, is gonna to get there first. I don't know, man. Let's put a beer on that. How about that? A beer on that? A beer on that. It's on it. All righty. Nice. What, what about you? What about you, Mike? What do you think? Oh, you know that. Other, other than the Mercedes cars, like, like what, what other names like from us talking like has stuck to you? Uh, Red Bull. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the pause was not a good sign. <laughs> I feel like I'm missing out on valuable information. Well, what about what about the drivers? Like who? Like okay, so, so you, you you remember Lewis? Yeah. Who else do you remember? Mm, Vitale is someone who keeps on coming back up. Right. 
Um, oh my god, I'm totally blanking. <laughs> this is, this is there's just so, so many fun. fucking names. Yeah. It's just there's. This is gonna be so much fun. I, and one thing that I uh, actually, w one team that I didn't say, but I think that they're also gonna surprise is Force India, it's specifically uh, Hulkenberg, because they they still have the Mercedes engine. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't. Uh, it's too hard to say with all this preseason business with them. Yeah, that's true. Not showing up and I don't know. And that itself can be well. Is that is that? Uh, I think we, we can, we can, we, can we can we can wrap it up with this. Perfect. Um, again, we have a website. Uh, we have iTunes now. We're like more of a legit podcast now. I it's think. like a thing. It's like yeah, it's a real thing. Uh, Flatofever dot com. Like said, time from Melbourne. Um, on the on the Flatofever dot com website, you go to the Reach Us page, and there's all our links for uh, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit. Flatofever on Gmail, Twitter, Reddit, Skype. Listen yeah. to our MP3s. <clears throat> Listen to Bamboo dot com. You like this sick. This is my new drum line. Peace. And Fantasy F1. Join us. Oh, man.